And we are live. What's up, guys? Welcome to Federer X. We're going to be talking about the Diddy case. Got a lot to cover, man. This is going to be a good one. Let's get into it. A special agent with Homeland Security Investigations, okay, guys? HSI. This is what Fed Reacts covers. The defendant Jeffrey Williams and associate YSL did commit the felony. So here's what 6 9 actually got. Racketeer conspiracy. This attack shifted the whole U.S. government. This guy got arrested. Espionage, okay? Trading secrets with the Russian. John Wayne Gacy, a.k.a. the killer clown, okay? One of the most prolific serial killers of all time. Killed 33 people. Zodiac Killer is a pseudonym of an unidentified serial killer who operated in Northern California. serial killers got? They really yeah, get off on getting attention from the media. Many years, Jeffrey Epstein sexually exploited and abused dozens of minor girls at his home. It was OJ working together to get Nicole killed. We're gonna go over his past, the gang ties, so that this all makes sense. All right, we're back. What's up, guys? Welcome to FedRex, man. Uh, guys, let me know if the audio is coming in good. Give me ones in the chat if it's coming in good. Uh, twos in the chat if it's not as good. <laughs> but yeah, give me ones if it's good. Uh, Angie, say what's up to the people real fast. Hey, guys. What's up? How's it going? Um, we're finally covering Diddy. You guys been asking for this. You guys also been asking for the Nickelodeon um, scandal. Um, and those are the most requested cases that I've been receiving the last two weeks. So here we are, covering Diddy. And we probably would have covered one of those cases for you guys um, if we had, um, if, if this didn't go down. But obviously, we're doing this one because uh, it's just been going crazy in the news. And I don't think anyone has really covered it ex uh, from the perspective of, of a Fed. I, I went on academic streams a few times this week, actually, uh, to give some insight when he was covering the case. But um, just so you guys know, it was my old agency, um, Homeland Security Investigations, that's running this case, um, just as they did with the R. Kelly situation. Uh, but let me see here, before I get into it, because we got a lot to cover, um, let me see if there's any chats. Okay, so we got here, Blackie says, Myron, what do you think about the theory that Didi is going to be the fall guy to protect uh, the people at the top of the ring, and they are raiding his home to hide evidence of others involved. Does H have power to avoid this? Look, man, you guys got to remember. I know that everyone has like a government conspiracy, like, oh yeah, we're gonna go ahead and you know frame people and all this other shit. Like, if you got information that someone who's like famous or influential is involved in like doing something as heinous as like sex trafficking or doing whatever, you're gonna do everything in your power to go after them. Because like I told y'all before, the feds are cloud chasers, man. So. Um, I'm not saying like, oh, everybody is perfect. But what I am saying is that that's how things stay honest, is that they want to have a big case. They want to have that media exposure. They want to be able to go to Congress and say, we need more funding because we put X, Y, Z people away. Like a case like this is huge, especially for um, for the agency, guys, because keep in mind that agency yeah, doesn't guys? have... Welcome to Federal X. We're going to be talking about the Diddy case. Got a lot to cover, man. This is going to be a good one. Hold on. Let's get into it. A special agent with Homeland Security Investigations. Okay, oh, guys, okay. HSI. You guys hear that right now? Reacts covers. Defendant Jeffrey Williams and associate YSL did commit the felony. Oh, Here's yeah. what 6 9 too, right? Yeah. Sorry, give me one second. I'm just fixing the whole thing. U.S. government. Okay, there we go. Sorry about that. Uh, I, I was able to hear myself on the on the feed. I don't know if y'all were able to hear it, too. Probably not, because it's uh, not on Firefox. But anyway, mm -mm -mm. Uh, so yeah, so that's what they want to do, is they want to go after the big people, etc., so that they can go ahead and do the big media press, because that's how you get funding and stuff like that, when you do big cases like this. Um, mm -hmm. So what I think, well, we'll talk about what I think later on, as far as like, um, you know, people, fall guys, and Diddy working with other people, all that stuff. So um, yeah, let's see here. Um, let's see if there's anything else. Oh, you guys did hear it? Sorry about that, guys. Yeah, I had another tab open on the side. I, uh, sorry about that. Um, okay. So, first and foremost, let's go over who is P. Diddy, okay? Um, just for those that might not know, right? A Puff so here Daddy. He is, right? Or Puff Daddy. Some of you older people call, know him as Sean Puff Combs. Daddy, right? Yeah. Sean Love Combs, uh, born November 4th, 1969, also known by his stage names Puff Daddy, P. Diddy, or Diddy is an American rapper, record producer, and executive, uh, record executive, born in Harlem and raised in Mount Vernon, New York, Combs worked as a talent director at Uptown Records before founding his own record label, Bad Boy Records, in 1993. Combs has been credited with the discovery and cultivation of artists such as Notorious B.I.G., Mary J. Blige, and Usher. As recording artist Combs gained mainstream recognition as the Notorious B.I.G.'s label boss and manager released in the wake and memory of his unsolved murder, Combs' debut studio album, No Way Out, was met with critical acclaim, peaked atop the Billboard 200, and received septuple platinum certification, uh... Recording Industry Association of America, RIAA, is two preceding singles, Can't Nobody Hold Me Down, featuring Mace, and I'll Be Missing You, 
uh, which you know we made jokes on those songs last time uh, on after on uh, the Friday show with um, Andrew Wilson. Shout out to him. Uh, featuring Faith Evans and 112, both peaked the Billboard Hot 100. The latter became the first hip hop song to debut atop the chart. His second and third albums, Forever and The Saga Continues, both peaked at number two on the Billboard. So, um, as you guys can see here, obviously very accomplished, obviously very successful with um, <clears throat> in the music industry, right? Made a bunch of artists, um, and then also right, he had the clothing line Sean John. He had uh, you know Ciroc bunch of uh, revolts, all these entrepreneurial ventures as well. And Diddy, if I'm not mistaken, what's his net worth now? Uh, Diddy, he was probably close to a billionaire. Diddy net worth. About one billion. Um, the rapper has lots of his recording, has a one billion estimated net worth. So definitely one of the most um, successful and rich um, music, uh, music uh, industry guys, right? Um, I remember we had the TV show that making the band back in the day in the early 2000s. Hilarious, man. Um, okay, so let me. Uh, so now that we know who Diddy is, guys, I'm gonna go ahead. Let me read these Rumble rants real quick, so they don't like pile well, up. Just to like switch the camera a little because it's still showing the computer. What was that? It's still showing the computer. It's not really yeah, uh, I'll fix it. I'll fix it. So if I do it just right now, it's, um, okay. So let's see here. Uh, so Rumble rants here. We got, um, Mario, did you see Gypsy Rose got divorced? The West is doomed. No, I didn't know that, Machaca. Uh, maybe Peso goes, go on Rumble and play the hits. Play songs from the biggest artist he discovered slash sign and play the Cassie song, Alamil. These young guys don't know Diddy was the pinnacle of the music industry in the 90s. Yeah, a lot of you young guys don't know that Diddy was behind a lot of the hits that you enjoyed in the 90s and early 2000s. Um, he's not as, like, relevant now with, like, the Gen Zers, but, yeah, I'm, uh, <laughs> he does have some hits. Uh, thank you for the value content and, uh, and the FNF fam gift to us. That's from Connect, uh, Connect Kid. I know this is Fed Reacts, but could you take a minute to speak on the Twitter space with Tommy Summer and what your biggest takeaway was? Uh, nothing, bro. I mean, it, FBAs are stupid. <laughs> like, that's that's just simply what it is. Um, and then we got here. And yeah, uh, t speaking of Tommy Sotomayor, guys, he will be back. Don't worry. He's going to be back. Uh, I, I We're going to make something happen. I was talking with him on Twitter uh, the other day. When's the next... We finna see the sun stream with Mo and Bills. Uh, soon. David De Niro goes, bring back <laughs> Nick and Ryan Dawson. Please replace Fresh with Andrew Wilson. Okay, guys. Uh, Valexia goes, yo, Meyer, Donovan made a bit about how he announces you as the leader of the Manosphere, and a lot of people are agreeing and support the idea that you bridge Andrew Tate and Kevin Samuels. I agree. I appreciate that, man. Um, I think everybody has their place. I want to say I'm the leader. Everyone, I think uh, there were people that came before me. There will be people that came after me. Um, you know, you can make the argument maybe that like we're one of the more popular ones, but I wouldn't say I'm the leader, man. I, I think, uh, you know, I appreciate all the guys that came before me, you know, guys like Rolo, et cetera, Donovan Sharp, MLD, all these guys that put me on and also, um, you know, kind of pass the torch. So we're all here to help guys out. That's what it's about. Ripsidian goes, you have to admit the timing is pretty sus. No diddy. We got bridges collapsing and 2.5 billion cents of them boys could be a distraction. I don't know. Okay. Uh, and then Red Pill Life goes, Overwatch stream tonight, Chinaman and Fit, maybe, I'll do it tonight. I played yesterday. IBN Mia goes, Yazol, when you are doing the JFK uh, assassination. That will come soon, don't worry guys, we're definitely going to do the um, JFK assassination. So, alright, so you guys are probably wondering, right, so did he got raided by the feds? Who raided him exactly? Well, it was these guys, alright guys? Um, U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement is a federal law enforcement agency under the Department of Homeland Security. ISIS state mission is to protect the United States from the cross-border crime and illegal immigration that threaten national security and public safety. Okay, so, um, and just so you guys know, right, so HS, um, ICE, right, was created in 2003 as a part of the Homeland Security Act, right? Um, and what happened was, and I'll show you this real quick, just so you guys kind of get an idea, right? So you go back, and we're going to go INS... Instagram. See, they don't even know it anymore. They're like, what is this? Okay. So you got INS and then you got the U.S. Customs Service, right? Boom. So you have these two legacy agencies, okay? INS, which used to exist prior to 2003, and you got the United States Customs Service right here, right? Um, it dissolved March 1st, 2003. Just like INS did, March 1st, 2003. 
Why? Well, the reason why it was dissolved, guys, was to combine the two to create ICE, Immigration and Customs Enforcement, okay? And you guys are probably wondering, well, Myron, why is that relevant? The reason why it's relevant, guys, is because ICE, once ICE was created, there's two offshoots of ICE, okay? You got Homeland Security Investigations, which is right here. That's what HSI Special Agent Badge looks like. That's what I used to do back in the day. Then, okay, you got an ICE, Immigration Enforcement Customs, officer or a deportation officer, right? Their badge says officer on it. So one side does criminal investigations like you guys see right now with Diddy, where you're investigating sex trafficking, human smuggling, drug trafficking, drug smuggling, firearms, money, uh, uh, um, money laundering, financial crimes, uh, child pornography, child exploitation, all that stuff, H terrorism, et cetera. HSI investigates all that stuff. They have the broadest authority of any federal agency, right? Then you got... ICE, um, Office of Enforcement and Removal Operations, right? So you got ICE, HSI, then you got ICE ERO. Enforcement and Removal Operations, guys, is responsible for deporting the illegal aliens. So let's say an HSI agent does a case, right? It's on an individual, the person's an illegal alien, right? And then after that person's convicted, ICE ERO comes in, picks that guy up, and actually facilitates deporting him because the whole deportation process is extremely labor intensive. You have to have immigration jails, immigration holding, uh, transporting them around, feeding them, clothing them, getting jets for them so that they can fly back to their foreign country. Deportation officers have to, you know, organize that. So the, the deportation process, guys, is extremely taxing. HSI doesn't deal with that whatsoever. HSI only does investigations. We do investigations on foreign nationals and on American citizens, okay? Whereas ICE ERO only deals with foreign nationals. Give me ones in the chat if that makes sense. Now that you guys know the difference between ICE HSI and ICE ERO. Give me ones in the chat if that makes sense. Give me a two if it doesn't make sense. And I want you to specify why it doesn't make sense. Because um, I really want to make sure that we understand what's going on here before I continue to move on. Angie, can I get an energy drink, please? Um, let's see here. I'm looking at the YouTube and the Rumble chat. Okay, I'm seeing a bunch of ones. Someone said two. I'm Chris, one of Chris's students. Okay, looks like there's a but two got diddled. Okay. Uh, all right, cool. Okay, so you guys understand. Um, awesome. So now that you guys know what ICE HSI is, this is this is who they are, right? Um, and this is their website. It's funny, I actually know this guy right here. Uh, cool dude. They they, they they took a picture of him. Um, and he's what actually uh, he's in the Miami field office. Um. Funny story, me and one of his agents got into uh, an argument over a drug case one time. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to say his name, but he's a good guy. But yeah, he's a supervisor. Uh, when I was there, he was a supervisor, this dude right here. Um, anyway, um, so yeah, man. So they investigated a bunch of different crimes. We talked about that, but this is their website here, guys, ice.gov, right? And then about HSI. Um, one thing I will be critical of when it comes to HSI is their branding is fucking terrible, guys. Uh, they, they don't do a good job of letting the, um, like, most of America doesn't know what HSI is, let alone knows their job duties and functions, right? So, uh, but the thing is, is that they do a lot of really big, cool cases, man. A lot of people don't know. HSI is the ones that found Chapo Guzman. Uh, HSI is the ones that prosecuted R. Kelly. Uh, a lot of the organized crime cases, guys, now, that are being done, are being done by HSI. And you guys are probably wondering, well, hold on, wait, Myron, it's, wait, what, what do you mean they're being done by, um, by HSI? Isn't that the FBI's jurisdiction? Yes and no. So you guys got to understand that after 9-11, right, it's, it changed America forever, especially from a law enforcement perspective. After 9-11, the FBI buckled down on counterterrorism. That became their number one focus, right? And obviously, when your number one focus becomes counterterrorism and all your resources and agents and everything that you have is dedicated to that, it's very difficult to do organized crime cases like they do used to do back in the heyday of the 70s, 80s, and 90s, right? Everyone knows the FBI is very famous for, you know, toppling La Cosa Nostra, right? The mafia. Um, but that was a different era, guys. The Bureau, they're the folk, I mean, they're, they're, terrorism was what they always investigated, but they didn't get the type of resources and manpower and priority focus on terrorism until 9-11. So with 9-11 coming in and the FBI being devoted to national security matters, HSI kind of came in and took a lot of these organized crime cases, guys. So, you know, you're seeing HSI do 
Italian mafia cases now. You're seeing them do MS-13 cases. You're seeing them do uh, blood and Latin King cases. They're doing a lot of gang cases. So um, they've stepped up and kind of taken that on. However, right, uh, they did this it's Takashi 6 9 case as well, right, out of New York. Uh, but again, the branding sucks. They don't do enough to let people know what they are. They need to do more outreaches. And one thing I'll always give the FBI credit for is they're fantastic at marking themselves. They're fantastic at building that lore, that legacy. Um, obviously, the, the one of the older federal law enforcement agencies, um, right now they don't have as good of a rap, but everyone knows who they are, right? Brand recognition is for real. And with HSI, they need to do better at this. Um, actually, a funny story. Um, like a couple of days ago, one of my buddies that I used to work with in Laredo, he's a supervisor now. Um, up, up north in Florida. I won't say where. And uh, I was on the phone with him and I was telling him, bro, like, you know, this Diddy shit is crazy. And I was like, um, what the hell's wrong with HSI branding has got to fix. And he was like, yeah, you're right. There is a push from headquarters. They're trying to, you know, get the agency out there more so people know what's going on, etc. cetera. Um, so they are working on it, but they're, they're light years behind. Okay. So, all right, cool. So we went over who Diddy is. We went over what ICE Immigration Customs Enforcement is. We went over what HSI is. Now, guys, we're going to go into what are the alleged charges, okay? 18 U.S.C. 1591, all right? This is sex trafficking of children and uh, or by force, fraud, or coercion, okay? Um, whoever knowingly, okay, we're going to read this because I want you guys to see how broad a lot of these laws are, 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 uh, are okay? Whoever knowingly, one, in or affecting interstate commerce. That's very important, guys. <laughs> Um, <laughs> did you hear that? Yeah. <laughs> Angie just jumped. Uh, let me know if you guys heard that sound effect, by the way, guys. Let me know if those sound effects work. Um, the reason why that's important, guys, is because affecting interstate commerce, right, or foreign commerce is how the feds get jurisdiction, okay? A lot of people say, well, Myron, why can't the local police or state police just do this? You're right, they can. But once it affects interstate commerce or foreign commerce, now the feds get jurisdiction, Okay. Or within the special maritime and territorial jurisdiction of the United States, recruits, entices, harbors, transports, provides, obtains, advertises, maintains, patronizes, or solicits by any means a person or benefits financially or by receiving anything of value from or to participation in a venture which has engaged in an act described in violation of paragraph one, knowing or accept where the act constituting the violation of paragraph one is advertising in reckless disregard of the fact that means of force, threat of force, fraud, coercion, described in subsection E2, or any combination of such means will be used to cause the person to engage in a commercial sex act or that the person has not attained the age of 18 years and will be uh, caused to engage in a commercial sex act shall be punished as provided in subsection B. So guys, right here is huge, okay? Right there is huge. There's two main lines I want to draw your attention to. In or affecting interstate commerce, right? And then uh, has not attained the age of 18 years. This, my friends, is what differentiates a simple prostitution case from a human trafficking case. So we're going to go back in time a little bit, right? And when I used to do these types of cases, right? Because I did human sm trafficking, human smuggling cases back in the day, right? A lot of human trafficking cases, right, guys, end up just being prostitution ring busts. Why? Well, What's up happening is you get some information, you get it, you know, some info that there's some women being held against their will and they're working for a pimp and they're being trafficked, etc. You raid the hotel, you round up 20 prostitutes, maybe two or three pimps, and you start doing your interviews. During the course of your interviews, you find out that all of these prostitutes wanted to work for him. They were and they're all of age. No human trafficking case, guys, because they weren't forced, they wanted to do it. It is what it is. However, if they do one of these raids and then they find a minor under 18 years old, bam, the feds basically got gotcha. you. Gotcha, bitch. It's become a federal case because anyone under 18 cannot consent. Okay? Um, so that ends up becoming a human trafficking case, which is a lot of the times how the feds get jurisdiction. So... One, it affects interstate foreign commerce or special maritime and territorial jurisdiction. So if, like, you know, they find a girl on a boat or something like that, that could that could give them venue. And the person not being 18. Now, let's assume those prostitutes were being held against their will. Or maybe they were foreign nationals and their passports were taken from them, right? And they were being moved from state to state 
to engage in sex acts, then yes, that is human trafficking. But, and I talked about this with Johnny Mitchell, by the way. Go check out that interview, guys. Um, did an interview with Johnny Mitchell where I talked about this a little bit more. But uh, it's very difficult to prove a human trafficking case when everyone's an adult, guys. However, when they're not an adult, it's way easier to prosecute because even if the girl says, oh, well, I want to be here, but she's 16, guess what? That, that pimp, that organization, they're all going to go down for human trafficking because the person is a minor. Give me ones in the chat if this makes sense. Now that we understand what sex trafficking is. Give me ones in the chat. Or two, if it doesn't make sense, but tell me specifically why it doesn't make sense. I really want to, this is going to be one of the uh, more educational video guys. So I want to make sure that everyone gets it. Perfect. And guys, also, do me a favor. If you guys want me to, if you got any questions, ask away. Um, I'm going to go ahead and dedicate a Q&A portion here, probably towards the end, or maybe if it, the question is relevant to what I'm talking about specifically, I'll answer it right there on the dot. But if it's um, not, I'll wait till the end. But this is the episode, guys, to get your um, questions in. Because literally, it was the HSI New York office and the HSI Miami office that did these raids, okay, and L.A., and uh, as you guys know, I came from the Miami field office, so I know exactly how they work. I mean, hell, even on one of the pages, I knew what, who one of the agents were. This is fucking crazy that they got him here. Uh, <laughs> so, um, but anyway, so let me see here. Let me make sure everyone gets this. Because when we do these educational type videos, guys, I really want y'all to understand. By the time you guys are done watching this, you guys are going to have a, a better knowledge of, of sex trafficking than most people. Okay, so two... Okay, some of you guys are trolling, saying twos. Uh, let's see here. Ken Rose, 20 bucks. Appreciate that, Ken. Colin Besit became a member. Shout out to you. Uncle Luke says, did he go in to take that in jail? 50 Cent been trolling him lately. Yeah, he has. Because uh, he was smashing 50 Cent's baby mama. Uh, Hitman894 said, you say the conspiracy stuff is BS. What would happen if Biden's people went to HSI and told them your investigation goes no further? Kind of like what they're doing to Trump reverse. We see it. No, no, that's bro. That's not what I said. You're misinterpreting what I said. What I did say is if that there's a ring that, uh, that Diddy's involved in with some elites and everything else like that, the feds are going to want to bust those people because that's more clout for them. I mean, think about it. Why did, why did Epstein get killed? Right? We all know Epstein didn't kill himself, but they knew that if Epstein stayed in custody, he would have outed all the people that he was um, working with. So the feds were going to do their investigation, and they wanted to know who was on his list. And then guess what? He miraculously dies. He died, guys, specifically because the feds did want to do their job and expose everything. Right? Now, again... I'm not a, you know, you guys know me. I'm pro, um, I'm former law enforcement. I'm pro law enforcement. Are there corrupt cops out there? Absolutely. Are there dirty agents? Absolutely. However, when you got a big target like this, a Diddy, an Epstein, etc., these, this is, these are career making cases, guys. The guys that are doing these types of investigations, they want to take everybody down because they're going to get promoted. They're going to get uh, uh, respect. They're going to get um, move up the chain in the in the in the federal law enforcement world. So. Even though you guys say, oh, it's all inside thing. The precise reason why Epstein got killed was because he was going to go ahead and cooperate with the feds, just like Elaine Maxwell has been doing. So, um, of course, people do a bunch of bullshit as well, guys. I mean, I'm not telling you guys that there's uh, not dirty cops. There always are. But I think in um, certain situations, they want to go after these people. And trust me, they wouldn't have raided two of his houses with the force that they did if they weren't trying to put this guy away. All right. All right. Cool. So I think we're caught up with that. Okay. Uh, Uncle Luke says, question mine, if you're in a one-on-one -on -one fist fight and you are hypothetically losing, would you want your girl Angie to jump in and help you or would you rather her not jump in and handle it yourself? Um, yeah, I wouldn't want Angie to jump in. I'd want her to either run or pull out a gun and shoot him. <laughs> one of the two. But I don't want her to get physically involved where she has to put hands on somebody because that's... It's, dude, she's like... Angie, what are you, like five foot three? Like 110 pounds? 120 pounds? 30 pounds? <laughs> I'm 5'3", 115. There you go. She can't do nothing, bro. <laughs> she can't do anything. So, yeah, I'd rather her be safe and run away. Unless she has, like, a weapon or something like that. Um, anyway, so now, uh, Angie, you have anything for the people before I get into this uh, this video here? No, I don't. 
I just just go ahead. I want to know if if you can cover like the background of DNA with this video. Okay. So we got a video here, guys, from um, Law and um, Law and Crime Network. Shout out to them, right? Um, that and might it, get us hit with the copyright, though. No, no, no. This channel, it won't. It won't? Okay. No. Uh, it just came out a few hours ago, guys. And this kind of sums up what's been going on up so far because, as you guys know, a bunch of information came out, right? Diddy got raided, et cetera, mm -hmm. um, in two different locations. So this is going to go ahead and uh, kind of cover that. And I'm going to play it at uh, – and I'm going to get pause it pretty frequently to give commentary. Um, but this kind of brings everything up to speed because, as you guys know, Diddy was raided. As a matter of fact, you know what? Before we even do this – let me let me see here. Did he raid? Let's see if we can get the original first thing. Uh, let's go ahead and put Fox News or something when it was first happening. And for more on this investigation, let's bring in former FBI assistant. So this is the uh, original uh, when this first happened a couple of days ago. And director Chris Wecker. Chris, great to have you on the show. I mean, the big headline there is okay. kind of what we want to get into you with because it is now been confirmed this is a sex trafficking case, but Sean Combs is not the target. Well, he sure looks like the target, though, Chris. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, uh, apparently HSI is leaking out a lot of information, and you're right. We, it looks like there's a very significant sex trafficking, human trafficking uh, investigation underway, and it looks like it's coming out of the HSI. Okay, so you guys are probably wondering, why the hell is this guy all tacked out like that? What the hell is going on here? Um, so HSI guys has something called the Special Response Team, SRT. OK, um, I wasn't on the SRT. They asked me to join, uh, but I, I didn't want to do it. And, and the reason why is because it's very labor intensive and time consuming. And my thing was I was real big on doing big cases and doing investigations. When you're SRT, you train a lot, guys. I mean, these dudes are fucking really well trained. Um, they get trained by SEALs and uh, Green Berets and everything else like that. So um, very good. But uh they were the ones that went ahead and, and hit the house here. And some of you guys are like, whoa, why such force? The reason why, guys, is because when you're raiding someone's home that's that big, that has security, and you know that the security is armed, uh, you're going to go ahead and make sure that you have your best guys go in there, bro, because I keep it a thousand with y'all. A lot of agents are not that good tactically, you know, and uh, they do dumb shit. So you might as well just let the SRT team go ahead and handle it, right? And every big office, Los Angeles, Miami, New York, they all have an SRT team, so you let them do it. Uh, division of International Organized Crime or so, something along those lines. So mm -hmm. it looks pretty significant. You've got two major search warrants, a lot of, lot of process around those search warrants, a lot of kitted out uh, tactical people raiding those two locations. So it, it looks like a lot of drama around all this. And you know there's enough probable cause because you don't get uh, search warrants without strong probable cause that it, there is a, at least a human trafficking, sex trafficking ring at, at work here. And explain that to us, if you would, Chris, because I know we have talked about, Jonathan just talked about the fact that there have been a number of lawsuits brought against Sean Combs, women uh, alleging that he drugged them, and et cetera, and so on. My questioning, where does the trafficking come in there? What is it, what is it that we need to constitute human trafficking, sex trafficking, et cetera? Yeah, that, that's a great question, because it looks like some of these lawsuits are, are sort of personal lawsuits, sexual assaults, uh, sort of one-off. So to, to make human trafficking or make a human trafficking violation under federal law, you have to be taking women against their will and forcing them to, to commit sexual acts. Query whether there are underage women involved in this investigation. That would make it even more serious if underage uh, women or men are, are being forced to commit sexual And it makes it where um, you, don't need, you don't need the force like that if, if they're underage, right? And I think if I'm not mistaken with these allegations, uh, there was allegations that some of the women were underage guys, which, like I said before, gives them venue. Blacks crossing state lines, crossing international boundaries. And also a question mark is, what does this tie into a, an organized crime group, a human trafficking organization? And I, you know, I can tell you, the federal agencies don't like to get involved in one-off type cases. The F, neither the FBI or HSI will engage in small one-off, one or two you know, prostitution rings and that sort of thing. If they're, if they're working this case, there are every indication that this is a serious, significant human trafficking ring here. That's true. They're not going to waste their time with some bullshit, um, guys. You know, they're going to want to go ahead and make sure that they're taking on um, a real organization. That's why a lot of times when you have these, um, you know, these little prostitution rings getting busted, you know, the sheriff, or sheriff's office or the local police will go ahead and do it. And the reason why is because it's just John's getting busted with prostitutes. But when there's underage women involved or there's women being held against their will, et cetera, that's when the feds step in a lot of the times. Yep. Yeah. And I, I just want to kind of go one further with you on that, because here's former federal prosecutor Andrew Cherkasky, what he had to say about this. 
They allege uh, everything from rape to sex trafficking to being drugged, and then also things like sexual harassment and other workplace type violence or, or abuses that are going on. I put this somewhere in between a Harvey Weinstein and an R. Kelly type of case. Uh, so I think that, that the criminal aspects are something that have to be deeply investigated. In other words, he's saying, Chris, this is a significant right. case, and now you've got the uh, you know you've got the Southern District of New York involved in this. A lot of heavy hitters uh, in that in that. Yeah. So um, the Southern District of New York guys, right, is probably. <laughs> you know what? I, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna say it. So um, this United States Attorney's Office right here, guys. Okay, this is probably the the most aggressive and best federal prosecutor's office in the United States. Now, you guys are probably wondering, well, Myron, what the hell are you talking about? What, what do you mean one prosecutor's office is better than another? The reason why, guys, is like every jur every district, right, has a US United States attorney, okay? And that United States attorney is um, has a bunch of subordinates under him called assistant United States attorneys. Those are the federal prosecutors. A federal prosecutor is called an AUSA. A state prosecutor is called a district attorney, a DA, right? So with the Southern District of New York, they've taken on some of the biggest cases, man. They put away the mafia. They do terrorism cases. They did. Um, they've done a lot of the, the organized crime, like Takashi Six Nine, Casanova. A lot of the rappers you guys have come to learn and love. Whenever they get prosecuted, a lot of the times it's right here in the Southern District of New York. Um, they're known for doing high-profile cases. Epstein was a, New York, a Southern District of New York case. Um, so it's a very strong United States Attorney's Office. Now, the reason why I say that, guys, is because there's a lot of AUSA's offices that are terrible. I'll give you an example. Austin, Texas, San Francisco, okay, uh, Seattle, like what, have, what you're going to start to, and, and, and obviously the Southern District of New York is an exception to this rule, but most of the time when um, Denver, terrible, most of the time when you have an AUSA's office that's in a very woke state and or city, they're going to be very reluctant to charge certain crimes. But the Southern District of New York takes everything and they want to prosecute everything because they have a reputation to protect. So... Um, they're a lot better than other United States attorneys offices and they have a high win rate. Um, feds in general went about, you know, 95% plus their cases. Southern district of New York is closer to almost hundred percent, especially when they take on these high, high, uh, these big profile cases. And then H, uh, Southern district of New York, right. Is working with HSI in New York. So you got the New York field office for HSI. And then you got obviously the Southern district of New York, which is based out of Manhattan working with them. And they're the ones that are running this investigation. That area. Miami and Los Angeles are simply in assisting roles, which we're going to talk about that here in a second. I'm going to talk about collaterals. We're going to get really in the weeds. I'm excited for you guys. Well, I'm going to show you guys here in a second. So it really looks like, you know, Sean Combs, Diddy is in some trouble. It appears so. I mean, the question is, uh, since they're issuing some disclaimers about the, him being the target, is he really the target? I mean, it sure seems so. I mean, logic would tell you they're going to his house, going to both houses. They're focusing on his two sons. They have him in zip ties during the course of the search warrants. Uh, they, they may have searched his airplane at Opelika and detained some people at Opelika Airport, which I worked down in Miami. That's an airport of some notoriety. It's a small airport. Mm -hmm used to be a smuggler's airport. So, you know, there's a lot to work with here. And I, I guess it all rolls back around to, it's a pretty significant investigation if you've got HSI going to all this trouble. And Opelika, guys, is where all the private jets come in. Um, it's about 20 minutes from here. It's in the hood. I ain't gonna lie. It's a hood. Yeah, yeah. it's in the fucking hood. But uh, yeah, it's, it's where all the private jets come in. And then also, guys, a standard procedure. Anytime you're doing a search warrant, as you guys can see here, you're always gonna detain everybody in the house to make sure that it's safe because you gotta make the house safe. Then everybody comes in and search because when the feds come in, right, and kick the door, right, when they're doing a search warrant, their number one objective first is to make sure that the house is safe and there's nobody in the house. So obviously they're going room to room, clearing each room, and watch each room is clear. They come out, okay, clear. SRT typically will either stay on the scene or leave the scene depending on if they're needed. Then the agents that are actually involved in a case that know what to look for, et cetera, then they go in and they start searching. Out of the Southern District of New York. But you put your tac tactical guys in first, obviously, to, to clear the house. Which is a serious district. Yeah, former FBI assistant director Chris Chris Wecker. Chris, great to have you on the show as always. Thank you. Thanks, Trace. Okay. Singer whose latest album is called. And I know you guys are probably wondering, well, hold on, why'd they have an FBI guy coming in and talk about it? Well, guys, HSI and FBI work very similarly. Um, they both investigate human trafficking, and we use the same U.S. attorney's offices. We use a lot of the same tactics. We use the same laws, etc. So HSI and FBI are very similar in um, authority and how they investigate cases. Yes, something um, Yeah, I was watching earlier like an interview with like an FBI agent that was talking about the case, and he said that um, Homeland Security um, has the same authority than an FBI, than the FBI. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Exactly uh, the same. 
we, we pretty much have the same authority as them. The only thing that, uh, there's only a few crimes that I could think of that they investigate that we don't. Um, bank robbery, mm -hmm. terrorism, that's their number one thing is, is terrorism. Like, so if we come across a case, like, let's say, I, I, matter of fact, I'll give you an example. When I was doing my case uh, with the Sri Lankans, I came across people that were involved in some potential terrorism. I had to get the FBI involved, right? So, um, uh, and they also do um, espionage. So, like, spies and shit like that mm -hmm. of foreign or adversarial nations. And then um, the other thing that they do that we don't is they do, well, that would be pretty much um, counterintelligence. Yeah, those are, and then isn't public the, corruption, but we do public corruption too. Isn't the commerce inter, inter like the interstate lines thing that, that they also do that you guys don't? Or no? Uh, what do you mean by interstate commerce that they do that we don't? The, not, inter, not not commerce, but the, the, the crimes that are committed like inter, like, you know, when you cross uh, lines. Oh, both, uh, both of us do that. Okay. All, fe all feds. So, um, so for example, right, um, like ATF, right? ATF charges found in possession of a firearm, right? Mm -hmm. People are probably wondering, well, Myron, how does the ATF or federal agencies charge you with found in possession of a firearm? Like, the gun is just a gun. Like, how did it affect interstate commerce? Well, the reason how it affected interstate commerce, guys, interestingly enough, is, okay. Give me one second, chap, y'all want me to explain this or not? Because this this is going to be a little nuanced. But if you guys want me to, I can. If Give me two, one second, chap, you guys want me to explain this interstate nexus thing, how deep in the weeds it can go? Or give me twos if you guys want me to continue on with the Diddy breakdown. Because I don't want to hold you guys up but good question angie let's see <laughs> miami police there's a bunch of ones and twos yeah it's mostly ones um all right i'll do it quickly all right, so when ATF arrests you, right, or sorry, when the, when um, when they seize a gun, it doesn't have to be the ATF. The FBI can do it too, et cetera, and they get the, and they get the gun, right? They're going to do something called an interstate nexus report, and that interstate nexus report is what they're going to do is they're going to show, yo, the gun, the spring was made in Massachusetts, the handle was made in New York, the bullets come from China, whatever it may be, right? And by them showing that the gun was made and assembled in different parts, the gun affected interstate commerce, and then bam, they got you. That's how they go ahead and get venue, right? Gotcha, so bitch. That is how a lot of times the feds are able to get venue. And it could be something just as nuanced as you having a firearm on you, and that firearm affects interstate commerce because it was built in multiple places, and parts came from multiple places. So that's the more, I gave you guys the Cliff Notes version. Um, so we'll, we'll move on. That way everybody's happy. You guys get the explanation, and then the other guys, we could continue and move on. Does that answer your question? Though? Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. So we got a, the video here that I told you guys about with the um, law and order. Uh, I'm going to play this thing at faster speed, obviously, um, and skip through some parts, but let's go into it. Love is getting a lot of hate right now. This after federal authorities have raided two properties linked to him, one on each coast. Sean Combs appears to be part of an investigation into a sex trafficking operation. And of course, this comes as he faces multiple lawsuits that accuse him of assault and abuse, and he denies it all. We're bringing you the latest details to drop in connection with Diddy and the massive investigation. Welcome to Cyber. Give me once in a chat if the audio is good for you guys and you can hear it uh, well uh, coming in. Bar Presented by Law and Crime, I'm Jesse Weber. So we have been focusing very heavily on the Sean Diddy Combs story. I mean, what's interesting about this is we actually were focusing on it, what, three, four weeks ago? I did a very big sidebar on it where I broke down all of the latest lawsuits facing the rapper, the mogul, the purported billionaire. And at the time, we were really highlighting one of the big lawsuits that he was facing. A producer named Little Rod Jones had sued him for sexual harassment, sexual assault, was alleging absolutely hor horrendous things against him. And this is on the heels of other lawsuits. Remember, Cassie Ventura had filed. And those are the two biggest lawsuits. Uh, you guys, As you guys know, we talked about the Cassie uh, lawsuit as well. This is his longtime girlfriend. Uh, this chick right here. <laughs> uh, which I think she had like one major hit song. Um, uh, <laughs> I've been waiting. Uh, me and you. Right here she is right here. Right. Uh, American singer, uh, dancer, actress, and model, born in New London, Connecticut. She began her music career after meeting record producer Ryan Leslie in late 2004. Um, and then she her debut single, Me and You, which was discovered by a rapper, Sean Diddy Combs, right? And I'm not going to play the music because obviously we're on YouTube, but this is it right here, guys. Right. And she was after J-Lo, right? 
This one right here. Me and you. 25 million. Oh, she, or actually, she no, wrote hold on. that song? 161 million. Oh, okay. Bad Boy Entertainment. I was like, what? Yeah, this song is, is really old. When the hell did this come out? This came out like 2005 or some shit. I was like in high school. You can scroll down and see in her thing. Oh, yeah. 2006. 2006? Okay. God damn. All right. Yeah, we're getting fired from McDonald's. All the lawsuit against him. She settled the day. Yeah, after, I was getting fired by McDonald's when that song came out. Traffic. <laughs> Picking, I mean, re the worst stuff you can imagine. And then all of a sudden you fast forward, and this week you see Diddy's name throughout the whole news. Why? Because federal agents raided properties that were connected to the rapper this past week. So here you guys can see her. Um, the tanks. Th this is their uh, wow. the trucks. Um, and this is the SRT right here from the special response team. They, they have trucks. Obviously, when you got come from a big field office, they have all this stuff. Monday. And it was reported that this is all in connection to an on. Okay. So let's have some fun with this. All right. This right here, guys, is a evidence bag from Homeland Security. Well, guess what? I used to do these cases, so we're going to go ahead and read this case number right here, okay? Oh, my God. All right, so <laughs> let me see if I can enlarge this somehow. All right, I got to find out. Chat, how do I screenshot this so that we can enlarge it? There's uh, got to be a way. What is yeah. it, Control-P or some shit? No, you got to just screen. Do you know how to screenshot from the computer? I'm trying to remember. I think it's Control P. Mo does it all the time. No, there is a button for that. There's right. a button? Okay, yeah, let's see here. It's right here. It's a little more here. Sorry, guys, I'm old. I think it's this one. There you go. Did that do it? Yeah. Okay. Let's go ahead. Boom. Uh -huh. All right. Now, what, where'd that picture go? Just copy, just copy and paste. Oh, like sex trafficking I, investigation. Where do, I, where do I do? It's this button. Print screen? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I go boom like this, then what? Press right click. Damn it. Oh. Patient. Oh. Now what? What do I do? Okay. Here. Just press right. All right plus. here. Plus. Or maybe this one. This one. There you go. The whole screen now. To be clear. God damn it! It didn't work. Hold on. <laughs> All right. What does chat saying? Control plus shift plus S. It's on your clipboard. Paste it in Paint. Yeah. Well, that's what would you now paste it into Microsoft Paint. Uh, okay, hold on, let me go back. Not sorry, chat. This is all in connection okay. to an ongoing sex traffic. I'm a millennial. We, we're not going with this stuff. So, <laughs> all right. So they said Control, Windows key plus S. All right. So Control, Control Windows, and then this one, and then S. What the fuck? Okay, that doesn't work. I think you're gonna fuck up. I, the way I was showing you, it's way easier, man. And then you paste it in, in Paint. Which? What do you do again? It's this button right here uh-huh okay and then i just click this you can click that that's a rectangular and then you copy and then you uh select what you did earlier rectangular mode and then okay Th this right here mm -hmm. what the fuck Print screen this mm -hmm. okay i got that now, now what now i think it's already saved in your computer so okay you gotta it up. all right so let me try to figure this out right now so i go boom and then they said, what, paste a notebook? Let me see if I can open this thing up right now. Notebook. Or paint. Do I have paint? Yeah. Okay. Boom. We got paint open. Okay. Hey we got it. All right. <laughs> nice. Sorry okay. about that, guys. Um, I never do this crap. So, all right. Uh, let me see if I can enlarge this here. Okay. Y'all just can see this? Can you read it? Yeah. So, am I, right? So, this is obviously out of the Miami field office, right? So, to me, that looks like an am I. So, guys, this is how a HSI case number looks. You guys are about to get a fucking exclusive right now. All right? I don't think this has ever been done on the internet before. But. Is that even legal? Can you do that? Yeah, I mean, you, you yeah. I mean, you dip, dip typically. It's like you're going to know it's, it's a case number. It's public shit. Because case numbers come up in court. Okay. So, I'm not going to go into too much detail, but what I will say is this. So, you can see here, MI. That means that's the field so office. those are like some laptops, right? In that box? In yeah. In the back? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, the most important thing, guys, is you can see the main office right here, MI. That means that the Miami office is, this is their case number, right? And then you got right here, New York. That means that's the originating office. That's how I know that uh, New York is the 
lead agency on this. Then HSI New York is the lead agency on this. And then 001, that's the actual case number there, right? And then you can see HQ there. I mean, that's pretty self-explanatory, right? That means that the case probably came from HQ. Um, and then fiscal year, and it's a human trafficking case, right? So, and that's where you see the 15. The 15 is like human trafficking. So uh, that's typically how you can tell. And then obviously you can see here, um, and this, and just so you guys know, every like case, right? Whenever you uh, the Fed sees something, they're gonna have um, this. It's gonna be like this. So the agency HSI case number here, who they took it, um, the agent that took it, right? A witness, and then the day they took it, the time they took it, right? So 3 p.m. on March 25th. Whoa. Then right here, Silver MacBook Air. So that so you can see here how they, um, you know, obviously this is getting documented. And then once they're done. They're going to seal that bag and give it to a forensic agent to analyze. Right? You, What's up? You, you got to you gotta like this video because I don't even know how you can read that from that picture. Yeah, I know. It's, it's not that it's clear. It's blurry and everything and you just like crack Because I used down. to have shitty hand, handwriting myself, so I used to write my case numbers like this too. You, you can barely <laughs> see it though. Uh, I, I, only, I can only recognize the day that it was in the 25th of this month. Yeah. Yeah. But the important <laughs> thing is that you can see here NY. Right. And we already knew this. This, this is all public information that you already knew. Um, and why th th this right here means which office gen generated the case. And it was New York. Right. Because so you guys, because a lot of people ask me this. Yo, Myron, if you have an investigation that goes into different territories, how do you coordinate it? The way you coordinate it, guys, the feds do this, whether it's HSI, FBI, DEA, we all do the same thing. Let's say I got a case. I'm based out of Laredo, but I got an, a case that I need to be done in Denver. I'm going to send something called a collateral request to the Denver field office. Denver's going to open up their own case, right? And then when they open up their own case, guys, it's going to go here with like, I forget what the Denver code is, but like let's say it's DV, right? So it's going to start with their code, the number here, which is basically the crime. Then it's going to come how it originated. Then the fiscal year, 24, then the office that originally sent the lead and then the actual case number. Okay. So that's how you read an HSI case number right there, right? Um, but um, <clears throat> uh, which is public information, guys. You can, you know, if you go to any court where HSI is, they're going to show case numbers and all this other bullshit. Um, but uh, but that's generally what it is. Uh, let's see here. But that's how it goes. So let's get back to the to the video. But that's an evidence bag uh, from HSI. investigation now to be clear yeah it's actually clear here in the fic the picture but yeah it has not been 100 percent confirmed by authorities if combs is a target or a subject of the investigation certain outlets are reporting that combs is the target what do i mean by that target is essentially the person that prosecutors have evidence against they're the one they're building a criminal case against so if he's the target of the investigation that is a very big deal it is being reported that the search was pursuant to a search warrant issued through the u.s attorney's office for the southern district of new york Need probable cause that a crime has been committed, um, gathering evidence in connection of that. Uh, and clearly, they, a federal. And just so you guys know, to get a federal search warrant is very difficult, man, because. Um, all right. Give me one in the chat if you guys want me to explain how a federal search warrant is achieved. If you guys don't want me to, we'll keep play, playing this thing. Give me ones if you guys want me to explain it. Give me twos if you guys want me to continue on. We're going to go with what the chat wants. Oh, we got 4,600 of y'all watching on YouTube and then another 2,500 you guys watching on uh, Rumble. Shout out to you guys. We got almost 8,000. Uh, my math sucks like 6,000 y'all in here, 7,000 y'all in here. Can you, can you full screen your face when you explain something? Oh, yeah, I can do that. Let's see here. Yeah, it's, a, it's mostly ones. Here, I'll do a poll. Nice. <laughs> Guys, if you're watching on Rumble, open up a YouTube tab and join in this poll. If you're watching on Rumble, all right, starting to poll right now. Chat, let me know what y'all want. I got it right there. How, explain how Fed search warrants are gained. Yes or no? Let's see what people say. I'll give it a minute. Let it rock out. I'll keep playing the video, but we'll I'll see. We'll, we'll give it like a minute or two. Judge signed off on this in order for these properties to be raided. And who are they raided by? 
Homeland Security carried out the raid. Homeland Security focuses on human trafficking investigations, among other things. Now, NBC News reported that several people have been interviewed by federal authorities in connection to allegations of sex trafficking, sexual assault, solicitation, distribution of illegal narcotics and firearms. This is so eerily reminiscent and consistent with the allegations from all of these high-profile lawsuits that I mentioned that were filed against Combs, his family, his businesses, his associates, sex trafficking, sexual harassment, sexual assault. It was a wild scene, though, at these properties. You saw agents swarming onto the properties, sometimes with guns drawn. We saw video of several individuals, including who appear to be Combs' sons, Justin and King, in handcuffs. Now, it seems like they were detained, not arrested. Uh, and at the time of this recording, it is not clear where Sean Combs is. There's been mixed reporting about his jet, his location. We don't really know. But what we do know is that at the time of this recording, neither he nor anyone else has been arrested or charged or indicted in connection with this operation. There are some updates, though, and those updates are what we want to talk about. So first up, there was this idea, as I mentioned, this probable cause, the search warrant signed by a judge. It's a very big deal. Uh, and we still don't know what exactly they're looking for. When you talk about sex trafficking, human trafficking, you're talking about bringing people across state lines for sexual activities for commercial profit. Um, commercial sex acts is another way to say it. And so what they might be looking at, you might be looking at documents, you might be looking at uh, computers, electronic devices. One of the things that stands out to me. Again, okay, so you can see it a lot clearer. See, guys, MI, Miami Field Office, HQ, headquarters, 15, which is human trafficking or human smuggling, um, fiscal year, year 24, that's the year the case was opened. And then, because uh, remember, the government goes off of fiscal year, October 1st. Then New York right here, New York is the original lead office, and then 0001, which means it's case number 001 for this specific um, field office slash um, crime slash fiscal year, etc. And you can see here that this is the Miami case number. Right. And then obviously, if you were to look at the New York version of this, it would say NY 15 HQ 24 NY 001. OK. And then L.A. is going to have L.A. 15 HQ 24 NY 001. Does that make sense, guys? Give me one of the chat if that makes sense. So every field office is going to have its own respective case number based off of the original case number from the lead office. Give me one if that makes sense in chat, two if it doesn't make sense, how case numbers work. And every agency has this, whether it's DEA, FBI, etc., they all have similar case numbers to this where when you send out a collateral, it's going to look like that. Is it just one laptop or am I looking at two? Uh, it looks like a tablet, right? Behind silver. It? So it's described as silver MacBook Air. Okay, so it's just a laptop. Oh, my bad. Yeah, so I think that says 1800. So six on th March 25th, 24, 6 p.m. And then here's a seizing officer. So this is a special agent that seized it. And then this is his witness. And then seizing agency, right? And then uh, violator. Funny how they didn't put this thing. Like, oh, I see what y'all niggas doing. They didn't put who the violator name is. They knew the cameras were going to be on. They knew the cameras were going to be on. So they said, nah, we ain't going to put who the fucking target is. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Gotcha, bitch. And then the description of what it is. That's fucking funny. That's fucking funny. Uh, so what's the line that, that goes after the case number? Uh, oh, line item. Okay. Good question, Angie. So when you're doing a search warrant, right, and you're uh, or like because so when you take a bunch of stuff from people, like you're seizing a bunch of stuff, you're going to have line item one, line item two, line item three, line item four. So in this case, they're doing a search warrant. They haven't organized everything yet, mm -hmm. so they can't put line items on them yet. So what they do is they leave that blank okay. until they have everything that they need. OK, this is what we're going to take. Boom. Let's start organizing and start numbering them then. So that's that's what it is. So that when they go into the system. They're going to label it um, the case management database. They're going to go in there and put it what line item is it, it okay. is. Good question. Uh, what did the chat say? Did that all make sense for y'all ninjas? Yeah, you got 81%. And 81% want me to explain how search warrant is gained. Okay. All right. I will I will go ahead and do it. Yo, if I'm going to do this, though, we got 4,600 of you ninjas watching right now on YouTube and another 2,600 of you guys. Let's see how many likes we got. We need to get the goddamn likes up because I'm telling you all this right now. Nobody can give you guys this kind of insight on the Internet. OK, I was really out here in these streets doing this stuff. Uh, we only got 1.2K likes. I need 3,500 likes and then I will go ahead and explain how search warrants are done, guys. Let's get to 3,500 likes. Me, When I think about one of these prior lawsuits, little Rod Jones, this producer, he alleged that Sean Combs has cameras in all of his homes. Oh, shit. And these cameras captured a lot of this illicit behavior as a form of blackmail. So was it possible they were looking at the camera systems? We just don't know. But one of the big updates that I have to talk about is this statement from Combs' attorney, Aaron Dyer. This statement reads, and it was from yesterday, it says, quote, 
Yesterday, there was a gross overuse of military-level force as search warrants were executed at Mr. Combs' residences. There is no excuse for the excessive show of force and hostility exhibited by authorities or the way his children and employees were treated. Mr. Combs was never detained but spoke to and cooperated with authorities. Despite- uh, you know, this is him just trying to save face. The thing is, guys, is I think the force was absolutely justified because the guy has armed security. You don't know who's going to be in the house. It's a big complex. you got to search it for a while to make sure there's no one in there. Like... The thing with law enforcement guys is they're always going to come in with a level of force higher than what they perceive they're going to anticipate. So, for example, if I'm going to hit a house and I know that there's people that are armed there or potentially armed, I'm going to send in the SWAT team because it's better to operate from caution and put the best people in there, clear the house out so that when you eventually do go in there and do your search, it's 100 percent safe. So, again, this coming from an attorney that has no idea of tactics, how law enforcement works, safety measures, securing a home. You know, securing a home for the purposes of a search warrant after the fact, getting rid of any potential booby traps or anything else that could be there. Like, you know, this is where lawyers don't know what the fuck they're talking about. That's why this guy thinks it's excessive, but I don't think it was excessive whatsoever. Um, If you know the guy has armed security, which everybody knows that, that Diddy does have armed security. I mean, hell, he fucking almost went to jail for it back in the 90s. A lot of you guys might not know this. His his, uh, rapper, Shine, got in a shooting at a nightclub and took the rap. Okay. And Diddy was able to walk away. Him and Jennifer Lopez both got arrested for that. Um, so Diddy is around armed security and people that be around and be ha- have weapons. So yes, of course. And they might have information also that his security might have weapons, which is why they moved the way that they did. Media speculation, neither Mr. Combs nor any of his family members have been arrested, nor has their ability to travel been restricted in any way. This unprecedented ambush paired with an advanced coordinated media presence leads to a premature rush to judgment of Mr. Combs and is nothing more than a witch hunt based on meritless accusations made in civil lawsuits. There has been no finding of criminal or civil liability with any of these allegations. Mr. Combs is innocent and will continue to fight every single day to clear his name. A lot of things to break down. This one. Number one, yes, he hasn't currently been charged with anything. The civil cases, one settled, the other ones are still ongoing, so he has not been found liable. That is all true. That could change. Is it premature to call this a witch hunt? Possibly. And just so you guys know, the civil cases are not criminal. He can't go to jail for a civil case. I mean, hell, this Cassie thing, he settled, I think, for some insane amount of millions of dollars to settle with her. But those civil cases can absolutely be used to build a criminal case, which is what I suspect happened here. And 3,500 likes, guys, then I'm going to explain how you get a search warrant federally. One of the things that I've noted is that you could say it's unique that indictments, arrests have not come in conjunction with a massive raid like this. Sometimes, usually they do, uh, but other times they don't. You need to build a case. And you hear this idea about perhaps that uh, federal authorities have spoken with a number of individuals that might have given them probable cause to then go for the search warrant to find more information. We've interviewed uh, Tracy Walder, former FBI CIA agent who said that you go into these properties, uh, this raid, one of the things you needed to do was to actually retain evidence, make sure it's not destroyed. Perhaps their authorities were tipped off that evidence was about to be destroyed. Not clear. But the idea of this military level force I thought was so interesting because we have to remember, again, going back to the lawsuits. Again, these are lawsuits. These are allegations, different standard. We're not talking about a criminal case. But when we talk about that and we look at the allegations in these lawsuits, there has been allegations of firearms possession that did he forced his associates to carry weapons for him. There was a shooting. That was referenced two shootings. Let me phrase two shootings were referenced uh, in that little Rod Jones lawsuit where Diddy engaged in this and or allegedly engaged in this and then had people cover up for him. So with those thoughts in mind and you're looking at how big these properties are, it is not surprising that you see this level of force. Authorities don't know what they're going into and they have to detain people, bring them out. Electronics were seized. We don't know what the contents of them are. We don't know exactly what they're looking for. But that digital footprint, as we covered in a number of cases, can be quite substantial. Um, And ABC has reported that uh, agents seized a number of electronic devices. Now, there's another update we want to talk about. I mentioned how there's been no arrests or indictments. Yes, in connection with the sex trafficking investigation. However, there was an arrest of a man named Brendan Paul, someone who was alleged to be Combs. All right, so I talked about this with academics. We'll play it here, and I'll give you guys my thoughts on this. Drug mule alleged that he supplied him with these illicit substances. This is, I believe, an allegation in the um, Little Rod Jones lawsuit. Well, he was arrested uh, for cocaine and marijuana possession out in Florida, I believe, at the airport. He has been bailed out. Just a little interesting detail about that. Now, his attorney, Brian Bieber, issued a statement to CNN. The statement says, quote, we do not plan on trying this case in the media. All issues will be dealt with in court. Interesting. Also want to talk about uh, the arrests here. So, again, there's been no arrest, but there could have Yeah, people were trying to say he was like a drug mule for Diddy or whatever. Bro, I mean, sometimes people like to, you know, complicate shit. Guys, he was probably just an idiot that got caught with Diddy when the feds wanted to go ahead and stop him at the airport, had some drugs on him, and got arrested. <laughs> that's what it... Honestly, bro, that's what it comes down to. Like, a lot of these dudes that, like, that are in show business, guys, a lot of them are cokeheads and do drugs all the time. So, been- that's what I suspect. They're saying, oh, Diddy's drug mule, bro. He just a dumbass ass some coke on him when he was coming back, thinking it was going to be uh, party time. And it ended up being party time, <laughs> all right, but fucking jail for him. 
uh, false speculation. Uh, there could have been rumors that Diddy's sons, Justin and King, were arrested. They were handcuffed outside of the L.A. property during the raid. No indication they were arrested. TMZ actually reported that they came back to the home to move things out. When we first saw the images of it. No, they were just detained, guys, because like I said before, it's standard, pro it's standard procedure. When you're doing a search warrant, every single person in the house is getting handcuffed. Were those kids, like, underage? Or? Uh, I don't know how old his sons are. Yeah, I, th I think so. I think they're all adults now, though, mostly. Maybe some of them are teens, but he most had of them, them are adults. With this, uh, with this girl that he was like married, right? I'm pretty sure. Look it up real quick. Yeah. Yes, I was reminded that his son, one of his sons, was implicated in wrongdoing in a lot of these illicit acts by Little Rod Jones in that lawsuit. That one oh, of his sons was involved sure. in a shooting at a music studio. That his son was present during a party where minor, underage women were present. So. And bam, that right there, my friends, is why I think the feds even are interested in doing this is because there were minor, uh, there's allegations that there were minor, minors involved. So when I first saw the images of them in handcuffs, you could make the mental leap that they were possibly arrested, but that is not the case. They were just detained. Now I also want to highlight something that was a little disturbing. Um, so when this happened, this raid happened, apparently some guy Damn. shows up outside of the raid in LA, claims to be Diddy's neighbor, tells reporters that he was noticing some shady things going down with Diddy, said he saw some wild things at night. It was reported on, it was amplified, it was circulated around. Turns out, that may not even be true. That he may not even be a neighbor. That, I have to highlight this. When we're talking about a high profile... Of course, people are going to come out of nowhere and say a bunch of crazy shit, right? Well, person. Everyone like, wants hey, that clout, okay? man. Rumors, speculation, misinformation is going to happen. And we have to be careful of that. We have to be mindful of that. And in a legal point of view, when you talk about Diddy and his cases, one of the things he has said in the past about all of these lawsuits is that it's a chain reaction. One person comes out, another person comes out, another person comes out. It's a money grab. They're making things up. That could very well be true. But it could also be that they're telling the truth. So we have to always keep a mindful eye about people's motivations and why they're going to be coming out during this time. Let's always remember that. And talking about that, let's talk about the celebrity reaction. So there are some celebrities who have made comments. By the way, guys, 1.7K likes we named 3.5, and I'll go over how search warrants are achieved federally. Oh, there That's are. Um, Justin is 30, and the other kid is uh, 25. Damn, they're grown-ass men. Yeah. Well, Diddy is old. He was born in 69, so. Yeah, he's, he's Including Cassie Ventura, age. whose lawsuit really blew, blew up in the whole thing for the public. She accused Combs, as I said. For years of abuse, assault, rape, trafficking. The events she described in her lawsuit were horrific. And one day after she filed it, Combs settled. Those details were confidential. But Douglas Wigdor, who represents Ms. Ventura, as well as a Jane Doe that filed claims against Combs, said in a statement, quote, We will always support law enforcement when it seeks to prosecute those that have violated the law. Hopefully this is the beginning of a process that will hold Mr. Combs responsible for his... Translation. We cooperated with the feds and absolutely gave them information. Translation. ...his depraved conduct. Even when you settle a case, those individuals could still cooperate with law enforcement. And I got the impression that after the Ventura settlement, it was never absolving Combs of wrongdoing. So let's be clear of that. Uh, there are others who have had beef with Sean Combs in the past. He has a long-standing public feud with fellow rapper 50 Cent, who after the raid posted on Instagram, now it's not Diddy Do It, it's Diddy Done. This seems to be in reference to a documentary series <laughs> that he's trying to put forward, the Diddy Do It. But he goes, it's Diddy Done. They don't come like that unless they got a case. Hmm. Since then, he's posted several memes mocking Diddy's legal that troubles. True. He also said Diddy was, quote, too freaky for society. And then we have Aubrey O'Day. She also commented on the raids. Now, Combs helped launch her music career in the early 2000s on his reality show Making the Band 3. She joined a group that became known as Danity Kane. But in later seasons of the show, O'Day was dismissed from the group with Combs saying, quote, she wasn't the same person he signed. That fame had changed her. But in a podcast in 2022, O'Day revealed that she was fired because, quote, she wasn't willing to do what was expected of her, not talent-wise, but in other areas. Oh, shit. Well, after the raids on Combs' home, O'Day posted, quote, what you sow, you shall reap. I pray this emboldens all of us victims to finally speak on what we have endured. Well, with that in mind, I am joined by Nadia Shihata. She is one of the New York prosecutors on the R. Kelly case, one of the people who helped put him away. So this is really interesting. So, guys, this is one of the AUSAs that was involved in that R. Kelly case. As you guys know, I did a whole breakdown on the R. Kelly case. Um, and for some of you guys, just to refresh your memory real fast, right? Right? So, boom. He got sentenced in 2022 uh, for... Um, Racketeering and multiple predicate acts of conviction, including illegal sex with minors, sexual exploitation of minors, bribery, coercion, and forced labor. Okay? And the office that did it, you always come down to the bottom. This is how you can tell which office did it. Um, the government's case being handled by the office's civil rights section, Assistant United States Attorney Elizabeth Jedez and Nadia Shahida. Boom, there she is right there. And Maria Cruz and Melendez are in charge of the prosecution. Um, and this is one done out of the Eastern District of New York. Okay, so not the Southern District, but Eastern District out there in Brooklyn. Um, was the one that ran the case. But it was HSI New York also that did this. Um, let's see here if they... And the way to tell that, bam. So whenever you come to a press release, right, for the United States Attorney's Office, guys, right, which is the most official press release, right, always read it from the U.S. DOJ anytime someone famous gets arrested. The pr first person that speaks, right, 
So it goes, Brian Peace, United States Attorney for the Eastern District of New York, not to be confused with the Southern District of New York, and Steve K. Francis, Acting Executive Associate Director, EAD, of HSI, announced the sentence. So bam. So you got the U.S. Attorney, and then you got Steve K. Francis, right? And then the agency. This is the agency that did the case, right? With anything that you see uh, on a U.S. DOJ press, the first agency mentioned is always the lead agency, right? Look, for example, let's go ahead, Takashi... 69 usdoj.gov, right? When he first got arrested, you come down here. Uh, so boom. Uh, Ber Jeffrey Berman, right? United States attorney. Angel Melendez. I know this guy actually. He was the uh, special agent in charge in Puerto Rico for a very long time. He was almost going to be my boss. Uh, but anyway, uh, <clears throat> he was, uh, uh, so they come up first. HSI, then you see also ATF was involved, and then NYPD. But the first agency listed is the lead agency. And then one more just to show y'all. This is a really educational episode for you guys. Casanova, USDOJ.gov. As you guys know, he dealt with RICO ca a RICO case back in the day, right? How do you know who led this one? Okay, well, you come down and you look. Let's see here. So announced that recording out. Okay, Southern. Okay, sentenced. Right. Okay, boom. So Mr. Williams praised the outstanding investigating work of the FBI, right? Western County Street Task Force, etc. So the first agent, agency here, FBI did this case. So that's how you guys could tell which agency was the lead whenever you look at a press release. Let's get back to it. Yo, you guys better like the video, man. I'm giving y'all crazy game right now. She's now a criminal defense attorney. Nadia, so good to have you on here. Sidebar, thank you for uh, taking the time. Okay, so she switched from being a prosecutor in AUSA, and now she's a defense attorney. I'll tell you this, she's probably making a lot of money as a defense attorney now because she has that on her resume. Being an AUSA, guys, is very difficult to be to do, so you can easily take that and then segue into private practice and make way more money. Thank you for having me. What is your reaction to the Diddy case, the Diddy raids? <laughs> Well, I think it's a significant development in the case. Obviously, he's presumed innocent. No charges have been filed against him. But when you take a step like executing search warrants so publicly at two different locations, it means you've ha you have a mass. I love how they put prosecutor. You mean AUSA, my friend. Significant evidence. You've got probable cause to believe a crime has been committed. Technically still a prosecutor, but you always want to delineate if it's federal or state. That's important. Which is the same standard for arrest. Uh, so it's significant. Now, obviously, as a federal prosecutor, you want to make sure you have proof beyond a reasonable doubt when you when you charge a case. So they're continuing to investigate. But it's certain. She's being nice. They don't they don't want proof beyond. They, they don't want. Did she say proof beyond a reasonable doubt? Hold on. Uh, so it's significant. Now, obviously, as a federal prosecutor, you want to make sure you have proof beyond a reasonable doubt. When you, yes. When you OK. That's very important that she said that, guys. Remember. The standard to arrest someone is simply probable cause, which is down here, okay? But to convict someone, you need beyond a reasonable doubt. The reason why the feds are so successful, guys, and I've talked about this a million times, but when I would bring my case to the AUSA, the AUSA, like, I was like, yo, let's indict this case. We got enough probable cause. You know what they would look at me and say? They'd be like, no, we need to make sure that this doesn't even go to trial. We want them to plead out before so. Or if we do go to trial, it's a slam dunk. So they want beyond a reasonable doubt before you even indict. Remember, for indictment, you just need this, probable cause. But the reason why AUSAs never lose, guys, is because they're extremely thorough. They make sure that they're beyond a reasonable doubt by the time that they're going to grand jury to indict the individual. So um, that is one of the biggest differences between federal prosecutors and state prosecutors. State prosecutors, they don't give a fuck. Oh, we got probable cause? Cool, let's arrest them. We don't care, because the state is okay with losing 50% of their cases that go to trial. The feds are not charge a case so they're continuing to investigate but it's certainly a significant step i am starting to believe i first i was saying maybe it's surprising that they didn't have a uh, arrest in conjunction with the raid or an indictment in conjunction with the raid and then i started thinking well they, they obviously had probable cause perhaps they were speaking with people um but they needed more evidence uh in what on very rarely uh do you do an arrest while you're doing a search warrant guys the only the only time i've seen it in my professional experience where you're executing an arrest while you're also doing the search warrant a lot of the times is i mean if it's a drug warrant and then you find drugs in the house that's a no-brainer but the other one where it happens the most is um, when you, uh, excuse me, with child pornography cases. So you'll raid the house, you'll find hard drives there, you'll find the child porn, and then you just sit down with the guy right then and there and be like, hey, bro, we found this shit, blah, blah, blah. 
they typically will break, or sometimes even if they don't break, you still go ahead and arrest them right there on probable cause, even though you didn't necessarily indict them because you got the evidence right then and Isn't there. Isn't that what happened with R. Kelly? They found videos with, like, child pornography? No, nah, they, they, they indicted him first and went after him. Oh, they didn't, like, okay. search his house and find it. Okay. But a lot of times that with CP cases, they'll search the house, find the child porn, and then arrest them right then and there off a of probable cause, and then file something called a criminal complaint. Okay. Those properties, perhaps before... There was an allegation maybe before it was destroyed. They want to preserve it. They want to get that evidence. They might be issuing subpoenas to people. I think that now I'm now I'm wondering if we may not see potential. They absolutely are issuing subpoenas. Criminal charges uh, for a while because it also might have to be submitted to a grand jury too, right? So we shouldn't expect perhaps charges against uh, Diddy maybe for a little bit. Absolutely. Look, if they're following kind of the playbook we used in R. Kelly and pursuing similar charges as we did in that case, these types of cases, you know, take a little bit of time to um, investigate and to make sure you've, you're corroborating all the victim testimony you're getting. You're, you're, you want phone records, you want travel records. There's all sorts of corroboration that you're sending out subpoenas for, that you're speaking to people about, and then also conducting searches to help you, with that. What did you think of the fact, the uh, criticism from Diddy's lawyer, that this was a, an excessive military style use of force? What's your take on that? Look, they, it, it did appear that there were some kind of military vehicles used. As, as prosecutors, you're, you're not kind of calling the shots on how agents— You definitely aren't. AUSA can't tell you shit about how to do your goddamn raid. <laughs> —operationally conduct a search. Um, my guess is, uh, giving them the benefit of the doubt, that, you know, they had— there were allegations that there were firearms in the property. It's a very large property. And Diddy likely had security with firearms. So they have to secure the location, and they have to ensure the safety of everyone conducting the search. So, you know, sometimes um, they err on the side of, of using— as much firepower as, as possible in those circumstances. Yeah, especially given the allegations in the lawsuits, which makes me wonder, do you think the lawsuits are what uh, precipitated this? Do you think the people who are accusing Diddy of wrongdoing are the ones who might be cooperating witnesses and what set this ball rolling? I think it's very possible that the public filing of that first lawsuit um, came to the attention of federal agents and prosecutors and may have sparked this. Um, and then obviously the follow-on lawsuits, once that first lawsuit was public, um, have only added to um, the allegations. And as a prosecutor, you know, you might start with the people who have made allegations publicly in a lawsuit, but I don't think they're going to stop there by any means. That's just the beginning. And then you're you're investigating, you're talking to more people. Other Yeah, so what I predict happened, guys, is obviously they talked to a lot of these people that were filing the lawsuits. Those people give you information, they give you records, they give you other individuals that might be involved, and that leads you to interview all those other people, and those other people can go ahead and corroborate or confirm some of the things that were said, and then you end up building like a network of witnesses. That's how this started with R. Kelly. Obviously, the documentary brought a lot of light to him. Investigators went and interviewed them, you get a bunch of witnesses, and then bam, they're able to build their probable cause to do the search warrants. Which, by the way, guys, still waiting here. Uh, 3,500 likes, and then I will explain how feds get search warrants, okay, in detail. No one has ever talked about this, I think, on the internet to the level that I'm going to talk about it because I've written hundreds of search warrants. Victims may be coming forward who have not been public at all now that they're seeing that this is a serious investigation. Um, so it's a starting point. We don't know what they found in the house, and I'm going to ask you about what you think they might be looking for. But, for example, if there was an allegation, hey, I, you know, Diddy has guns all over the place, and then you go to the properties and there are firearms all over the place, that kind of corroborates what they're being told. And that could be uh, useful for prosecutors in trying to establish a case and establishing what they're being told is real. Um, but what do you think they're looking for specifically if they are moving forward in a sex trafficking investigation? They're looking for anything that is corroborating information that has been given to them by live witnesses and victims. So, I mean, it's been reported they were looking for electronic devices. Sure, they're going to be looking for videos, potentially, of sexual activity engaged in with complaining victims. But they're also going to be looking for communications, um, particularly if they are pursuing potential RICO charges. I think they're going to be looking particularly for communications between Diddy and his inner circle, his inner network of people that may have helped or facilitated or enabled him to commit uh, potential criminal activity. Now, the reason I was so excited to talk to you about this is because you were part of a very infamous prosecution of a very infamous individual. Do you see similarities between the Combs case? Uh, let me rephrase. He hasn't, Combs hasn't been charged. But do you see similarities if we're talking about potential sex trafficking charges? You know what the allegations are right now against uh, Mr. Combs. Do you see similarities between him? And also, guys, there's a, the other important reason why they're going to have to try to do this thing as a RICO is because they get around the statute of limitations. As you guys know, a lot of these allegations came decades ago. The only way that they're going to be able to come and hit them with those charges is they need to show that the criminal activity was going on back then and it continues to occur now. So therefore, the statute of limitations does not apply. And one of the few ways to do that federally is through the racketeering statutes. Rico. And R. Kelly. Look, every case is different, obviously, but most criminal cases federally guys have a statute of limitations of approximately five years. There do appear to be some similarities based on the public allegations that have been made. Um, for example, the, the allegations about um, forcing individuals to have sex with others uh, for, for 
the pleasure of of Diddy in this uh, in this circumstance. There were similar allegations um, with R. Kelly, and that he recorded that activity. So that's it's a it's a pretty striking similarity in that sense. But also the level of influence and power, right? I mean, a big part of it when I'm reading the lawsuits is just you know you surround yourself with this team, you have tremendous wealth, access, this lifestyle. I, it was eerily reminiscent of what we were hearing from Kelly, right? Absolutely. I mean, when you are when you reach a certain level of fame and you've got a group of people around you that are literally there to help you with whatever whim you have, legal or illegal, um, and are getting paid to do so um, and are you know more than happy to turn a blind eye to wh whatever else may be going on. That's a, a very big similarity. Again, these are just allegations at this point against yep. Mr. Combs, but yes. And yeah, he hasn't been criminally charged. So when his lawyer says there's been no criminal liability, no civil liability, he's exactly right. Uh, those lawsuits are still pending. Uh, the lawsuit with Cassie Ventura was settled. He, at the time of this recording, Sean Combs has not been criminally charged in any way. I want to make that clear. Um, but I always thought it was interesting when you think about how the Kelly criminal prosecution began, how it started. It, it wasn't, um, it, was it, would you say it was from the documentary that was released that kind of got the ball rolling? Because again, you wonder, what is the thing that gets going? With Harvey Weinstein, it was that New York Times article. With R. Kelly, it was a really damaging, um, really damaging documentary. Maybe that was what you, you could say. Yeah, Surviving R. Kelly on Netflix. I don't know if you guys remember that, man. That show was crazy. I never watched it, but... Uh, I, I know that it went viral. He started the ball rolling here with Combs. It, maybe it was these lawsuits. I find it so interesting, the similarities with what initially what begins a, a criminal investigation. Yeah, look, in R. Kelly, there's no doubt that the uh, documentary and the public airing of allegations certainly came to the attention of law enforcement and we began looking into it. But again, in, in all of these cases, that's just the starting point. To bring a federal criminal prosecution, you really have to amass credible evidence that you can prove the case beyond you need a lot. a reasonable doubt. But the public airing of, of uh, such information against well-known people, that does get investigations started. There's no doubt about, about that. What was it like prosecuting R. Kelly? You know, we tried to, as, as best we could, approach it as we would any other important case that we prosecuted. Obviously, there was a lot of media uh, attention to it and R. Kelly fans. I, I would say the biggest um, thing that, that could have potentially affected the case was a, a lot of our victims received a lot of harassment on social media and so forth. And that takes a toll on people and, and certainly makes them hesitant to want to move forward with the case. When you were first prosecuting him, did, did you see a lot of people coming to R. Kelly's defense? Because at this time... I don't know if I'm seeing that so much with Diddy. Actually, what we're seeing is a lot of videos coming out from years ago that are looked at in a different context. You see high-profile celebrities who are making these comments, these innuendos about him. I don't see a ton of defense for Diddy. Um, when you were first going after Kelly, I mean, was there a ton of... Uh, were, were that is something I noticed, too. Like, a lot of people aren't coming to his defense. I mean, they asked Fat Joe about it, and he just sidestepped it. Like, hilarious, you know? You Were you yourself receiving any backlash, any threats? Uh, was there a lot of support for him? It, what we, it wasn't support from kind of public, well-known figures, but mm -hmm. he had a lot of kind of just regular fan support that um, would post on social media, YouTube channels, send uh, emails mostly to victims, not to the prosecutors. But we did receive, you know, some some of our own uh, kind of threats and such. Mm, that's so disappointing to hear. Um, so if you if, if this is a case where Diddy is ultimately arrested, ultimately charged, federal prosecutors, what would you what advice would you give them prosecuting a well-known figure like Diddy? I would tell them to put their heads down and pursue it as they would any other case. Try to block out all the noise and just build your case step by step with all the pieces of the puzzle together. And, um, you know, if it's this, it's reportedly the Southern District of New York, those are very good prosecutors. And that's what I would expect them to do. And how do you prove it? What do you have to show in a sex trafficking relationship? She knows that because Southern District of New York be slapping the Eastern District of New York all the time. She used to work for the Brooklyn for, uh, uh, United States Attorney's Office and the other one was in Manhattan. So she knows that they're good. Related case. Uh, uh, Eastern District of New York and the Southern District of New York are very competitive. What do you have to prove to make that conviction? Yeah, so it, it depends exactly how they're pursuing this. If it's if they do it through a RICO, which I suspect they're probably looking into. 100% they're going to do it through a RICO. Um, they're going to need to. It's the only way they're going to be able to bring in all the charges from the 90s and early 2000s. It's one of the few ways they can bring it in show an enterprise, so an inner circle, a group that helps him uh, facilitate a pattern of criminal activity. And then that pattern can include things like forced labor or sex trafficking. Um, the sex trafficking here um, could be, you know, transporting people via his private plane or otherwise um, to commit commercial sex. And commercial sex doesn't necessarily have to mean, uh, you know, paying money, um, but also um, receiving anything of value. So he's he's get, making videos. So some of you guys might be wondering, Mara, what the fuck is a RICO? For any of you guys that are wondering, this is the RICO right here. Okay, Racketeer Influence and Corruption Organizations Act, all right, is United States federal law that provides federal, uh, pr provides for, uh, for extended criminal penalties and a civil cause of action for acts performed as part of an ongoing criminal organization. Okay, it was enacted uh, of the Organized Crime Control Act of 1970. And guys, the RICO Act was created to combat the mafia, okay, um, but it's been successfully used to dismantle a bunch of different criminal organizations. And one of the things that's good about the uh, RICO that no one really talks about is that it allows you to bring crimes in that were committed 
beyond the statute of limitations because you're, all you need to do is show that it's an enterprise, right, which is basically an organized crime group, right, because they look at it as an illicit business when the AUSAs do this. When you read RICO indictments, they look at it as a, as a business. They always define it first, right? Then they go into what the criminal organization was involved in, right? So, for example, I'll go ahead and show you guys real fast. Um, boom. Taka Let's go look at Takashi 69, right? 69 indictment, right? So you go in here, because I know he got charged under RICO. Here's, here's, the, here's the indictment right here, right? And I'll show you guys what one looks like. Boom, right? This is what a federal indictment looks like. Right. Obviously, it has the Southern District of New York, United States of America versus all these people. All these guys are high ranking bloods, by the way. Right. And six nine is here. Right. November 19, 2018. Right. Count one. So first, look, number one, first thing they have to do is refer to it as the enterprise. OK. At all times relevant to this indictment, blah, 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 blah. Uh, and associates of the nine trade gangster bloods, nine trade or the enterprise. Right. So they identify what organization they're a part of. And then as soon as they do that, bam. Now we're going to refer to this gang, whether it's the Bloods, the Latin Kings, Diddy's organization, etc. Let's go ahead and look at the uh, R. Kelly indictment. I didn't know his name was Daniel Hernandez. Yeah, Daniel Hernandez. Right. All indictments are written fairly similarly. Uh, boom. Here's the R. Kelly indictment. Right. Boom. Right there. Number one, the enterprise. Right. So very important for them to establish that it's an enterprise, a.k.a. a criminal organization, and that's how you get around the statute of limitations problem that a lot of these long-term cases have. Okay, so it goes into defining what the enterprise is, etc., what they did, all that stuff. So every indictment that's involved with RICO is going to be written the same way. That first paragraph, guys, is always going to be the enterprise. Let's get back to it. But, um, Go ahead. So, question. Um, yeah. If Diddy gets indicted with RICO, like, what cases would they like bring him in? Like what cases will they indict him for? Uh, that well, they he would be in. Oh, you mean what charges? Yeah, what charges? It would be human Sorry. trafficking. It would be human trafficking. But would it be more than that? Like, uh, if they could find more. Okay. Um, but right now, I think it's it's right now is the main thing. So if we look at the R. Kelly one, right? So here six nine, right? Rico and the reason the crimes that because you need to have like um, crimes right mm -hmm. that were involved. Let's see here. For this is going to be murder, drug trafficking, right? For gang stuff is typically violence. Here, it's going to be, let's see here. Count one is racketeering, kidnapping, sexual exploitation of a child. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So these, this is probably what it's going to be for, yeah. um, for Diddy. It's going to be more stuff along the lines of this. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if they're not using very similar um, language and okay, charges. Okay. Exactly. So a man act violation. And they refer to each of the victims as Jane Doe, forced labor, Man Act, right? And actually, let's look up the Man Act real quick. And, and the Man Act, also known as the White Slave Traffic Law of 1910, is a federal law that criminalizes the transportation of any woman or girl for the purpose of prostitution or debauchery or for any immoral purpose, right? And then you look at this indictment here. Man Act with a bunch of them is what they're using for R. Kelly, which I anticipate... They're going to use the same coercion of a minor, coercion and enticement. They're going to use the same for um, for Diddy. But if you look at here with this gang one, what is it going to be? It's going to be um, firearms offenses. It's going to be uh, violent crime in aid of racketeering. Um, more violent crime in aid of racketeering. Firearms offense again. More violent stuff. More violent stuff. So yeah. Ricos can be written differently depending on the violations involved. So think of it this way, audience, right? So you got RICO is the shell, right? It's the platform on which the charges are based, right? Because it's a criminal enterprise. Every criminal enterprise, though, does different crimes. So on one end, we got a gang like the Bloods who are involved in drug trafficking, violent acts to, you know, support the image of the gang, um, murder, extortion, all that shit. Then on the other hand, you have sex trafficking rings like we talked about with uh, R. Kelly, where they're transporting women around, the women are being paid, they're being coerced, maybe they're underage. Um, we, we're, you know, we're looking at the Man Act here, which you know, right here says it's traveling interstate with women for any type of fuckery, right? As we talked about with prostitution, etc. So um, RICO is just a platform under which you charge them, but then you can have different crimes that qualify under RICO. Chat, give me ones if, if that makes sense. 
Good question, Angie. Give me ones if that makes sense, guys. Give me two if it doesn't and tell me why, but give me ones if that makes sense. This is a very educational episode that we got for y'all today. We got 5,000 plus y'all ninjas in here, by the way. Shout out to all you guys. You guys can be anywhere else in the world, but you're here with us. So, appreciate that. Oh, you're done? Can I get another one of, of this? Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's see what the chat says. Ones all around? Perfect, perfect, perfect. Perfect. Okay. Yo, give me flame emojis, guys, if you guys are learning today. Give me flame emojis in the chats. I want to see how many of y'all are learning, man. Because that's the purpose of Fed Reacts, guys. I really enjoy sharing my knowledge with y'all, giving you guys my professional background, and really teaching you guys how this stuff works. Because a lot of people see the stuff in the movies. A lot of people see, you know, the glitz and glamour, but they don't see, like, what actually goes into building a case. They don't actually see how these cases are built, put together. They don't see how the charges are made, etc. cetera. So, um... I'm really happy that I'm able to uh, bring this stuff to y'all. ...of this activity, that could be a thing of value as well. So, um, and using force or fraud or coercion to do that. And so abusing victims, putting them in humiliating situations, right. that can all be part of that. Or promising them money or something of value and then not delivering it. That would classify it as well? Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So, and, and what would be the challenges that prosecutors would face? Legal challenges. How would uh, someone in Diddy's position or if someone was arrested, you know, someone else uh, in connection with this, how do, how do they defend it? What kind of arguments would you expect from the defense that you'd have to fight back on? Okay, this is a good question. What type of the arguments would you make to defend yourself against charges like this of human trafficking, sex trafficking, et cetera? Yeah, if they pursue RICO charges, I imagine a defense would be that there was no criminal enterprise, um, that this, to the extent there was criminal activity, this was and the, one person acting. And the reason why it's important, guys, to show that there was no criminal enterprise because a RICO, you must establish, number one, that it's an enterprise. You guys, I showed you guys multiple indictments. Every single one starts with the enterprise, whether it's the Bloods, the Crips, a sex trafficking organization, they need to establish it's an enterprise first. So that's what they're going to attack, because if you attack the enterprise argument, there is no case. Alone. And, if and that is what I suspect Diddy's legal team is definitely going to go after. If it's not RICO, a lot of it would potentially fall outside of the statute of limitations. So the advantage of RICO is it lets you go kind of decades potentially in the past and also to it expands venue. So you can charge criminal activity that occurred not just in the Southern District of New York, but throughout the country. If that's taken away, you know, that would be a big hit to um, the scope of any criminal indictment. Last year, Diddy's ex girl Yeah, they wouldn't be able to do it because the statute of limitations alone would, would, uh, would make the case, would nullify the case. Cassandra Ventura, who you probably know as singer Cassie, accused him of sex trafficking and sexual slavery. She alleged that Diddy raped her and beat her so severely that she was bruised. Cassie also alleged Diddy made her have sex with prostitutes and recorded it on video. She also says he forced her to carry a gun. Cassie sued him under New York's Adult Survivors Act and settled with Diddy outside of court just one day after this. And, and a bunch of people came forward with these, uh, uh, like there was like 10 uh, stars that got charged with, um, with this stuff uh, because there was a statute of limitations on that. Guys like Omar Cuba Gooding Jr., a bunch of guys got uh, hit with these allegations at that time in New York. Suit was filed. Joy Dickerson Neal also filed suit against Diddy under the Adult Survivors Act, accusing him of drugging and sexually assaulting her back in 1991 when she was a college student at Syracuse University. Diddy was slammed with yet another lawsuit last month, this time brought on by music producer Rodney Jones, also known as Lil Rod. The 73 page lawsuit lays out dozens of allegations against Diddy, including that he forced Lil Rod to hire prostitutes and have sex with them. The court doc also claims Diddy himself assaulted Lil Rod, but that's not the only bombshell allegations revealed in the detailed documents. Lil Rod doesn't shy away from publicly naming other celebrities he says assaulted him. I don't know that Cuba Gooding Jr. is going to escape from that one. Let's start with the allegations against Academy Award winning actor Cuba Gooding Jr. Lil Rod alleges Diddy was, quote, grooming him to pass him off to his friends. This fear became reality when- Oh, shit. Mr. Combs introduced Mr. Jones to Cuba Gooding Jr. when they were on Mr. Combs' yacht. There's actually photos of their interaction together, too, which are laid out in those court documents. In the first pic, you see Diddy and Cuba talking with Diddy's arms on Cuba's. In the next pic, Cuba has his arm around Lil Rod and is smirking. Court docs go on to state, quote, Cuba Gooding Jr. began touching, groping, and fondling Mr. Jones's legs, his inner thighs near his groin, the small of his back near his buttocks, and his shoulders. He rejected his advances, and Mr. Gooding Jr. did not stop until Mr. Jones forcibly pushed him away. In the last couple what of the years, fuck? there were allegations against him for sexual assault. So now we have oh those allegations, and now we see him tied to this case as allegedly uh, trying to, you know, uh, assault a little bud, assault others. Back in 2019, Cuba was booked on misdemeanor charges of forcible you touching what? and sexual abuse after he allegedly groped a woman in Times Square. By the next year, three women had come forward, accusing him of non-consensual sexual touching. He eventually reached a deal with prosecutors that required six months of counseling, but no jail time. I, I am getting the feeling where there's smoke, there's fire, right? Because now we have two different instances where you're accused of the same type of behavior, you know, years apart. 
I, I think there's something there. And I don't know that Cuba Gooding Jr. is going to escape from that one because he already saw definitely people moving away from him within Hollywood circles and other circles once those first sexual assault allegations came out. So at this point, I don't think he's going to get, get away with it Pause. a second time. Is it God possible damn, that Cuba Gooding, he could face charges based on these allegations? Boys in the hood for real. <laughs> it is possible as well. Um, again, we've got the statute of limitations issue to deal with. So depending on the time frame of when this happened is, you know, again, the Adult Survivors Act, which was the vehicle where many of these lawsuits came out, many of these civil law schools suits, excuse me, came out, there, there was a finite amount of time for those suits to be filed. The time frame is going to be very, very important. Uh, what witnesses come forward, because again, you know, this, this may not be a situation where DNA be, may be at play. This may be more of a situation of, hey, yes, I was there and I re recall, you know, uh, Cuba Gooding Jr., you know, putting his hands on the rod or I, re you know, recall certain aspects. So it's going to be a very witness intensive type of case. And the question is, will the witnesses be willing to come forward? Lil Rod's lawsuit also publicly named another celebrity linked to Diddy, Jennifer Lopez. From the, the standpoint of the, the names of the celebrities that were tied to this, the fact that Jennifer Lopez was tied to this back when. Yeah, a lot of people don't know that uh, Diddy and Jennifer Lopez dated for a while in the 90s. Um, and uh, I think, was it there? Yeah, early into the early 2000s. I think, if I'm not mistaken, the whole song, I Need a Girl, was because of J-Lo. <laughs> you know, that, if you guys remember that one. And she was involved in a or party to a shooting at a nightclub when she was dating Diddy. And yes, that's the shooting I told you guys about Shine, where he went to jail for like 10 plus years, was, uh, was that shooting where J-Lo was at is now alleged to have brought the gun with with her to the scene and gave it to Diddy and that's how the shooting occurred. Lil Rod's team brings up J-Lo when establishing Diddy's history, writing his quote, Rico Enterprise has existed for at least 20 years, dating back to the 1999 nightclub shooting in NYC when Mr. Combs required his then girlfriend Jennifer Lopez to transport his illegal firearm. And then boom, uh, into the NYC nightclub. Mr. Combs forced his then artist Shine to assume responsibility for the shooting of several individuals. Mr. Combs uses power, money, and influence to bribe jurors and witnesses such as the friend of the shooting victim uh, Natanya Rubin, who reported to law enforcement that she saw Mr. Combs and not Shine pull the trigger and shoot her friend in the face. Natanya Rubin later testified at Mr. Combs' criminal trial that she was trying tying her shoe and may have not seen who shot the gun. She later confessed that Mr. Combs paid her. Holy bumbacat! into the NYC nightclub. The court docs allege Diddy forced his then artist Shine to assume responsibility for the shooting of several individuals. All this happened back on December 27, 1999, when a fight broke out at a nightclub. Diddy, J-Lo, and rapper Shine And this is why it's important for them guys to bring it in under RICO, because if they're not able to bring it in under RICO, that, um, th that they can't bring that in, that shooting, because it's so goddamn long ago. 1999, goddamn. But can, can they bring it with RICO, though? What was that? Can they bring that shooting with RICO? Potentially. Oh. Potentially they can. Damn. Yes. Okay. We're all that shooting could come in if, if they're able to uh, establish enough evidence. There. And according to former rapper Mark Curry, Diddy paid Shine $1 million to take the fall for the shooting and serve a 10-year prison sentence. Lil Rod's lawsuit now suggests it was J-Lo who brought the gun. The fact that she is somebody who was carrying a weapon, could that be incredible? I guess she still really is Jenny from the block. <laughs> right, that song? Yeah. <laughs> Don't be I'm fooled by the rocks that I got. I'm still, I'm still Jenny, Jenny from the, the block. block. That's fucking funny. <laughs> Jenny from the block bringing in the burners into the fucking nightclub, bro. Oh, Lee. Right. Criminating for Jennifer Lopez? It can be, um, but with a, with a huge caveat, right? Um, if I'm not mistaken, that shooting did not result in a death. I know that somebody was harmed, but I don't believe anyone was killed. Because of that, you had the statute of limitations to deal with. A, prolonged amount of a certain amount of time that a prosecutor has to be able to bring charges against someone. And it, it varies from state to state. And just for so the audience knows, this is who they're talking about with Shine. Some of you guys might not know who this individual is. I wouldn't su be surprised if you don't because he is old. And I think he only had like one song back then. But this is him, right? Okay. Moses Michael Levy Barrow, uh, born Jamal Michael Barrow, best known by his stage name Shine. Uh, he's a Belize Belizean rapper, politician, and convicted criminal. He's leader of the opposition in the Belize House of Representatives and a leader of the Belize United Democratic Party. So now he's a politician. God damn. Things have changed. <laughs> Dude went to jail. Now he's a politician. Um, uh, Barrow was born in Belize but moved to Brooklyn, New York as a child and began to rap as a teenager. Perhaps best known for his 2000 singles, Bad Boys and Bonnie wow. and Shine. He also wrote and performed on a number of multi-platinum albums such as uh, Usher's Confessions, Lil Wayne's Carter, uh, Notorious B.I.G. Born Again, Mace's Double Up, and Puff yeah. Daddy's Forever. Yeah, this guy was a good writer. Um... But yeah, and this is the shooting, right? Shooting and trial. Uh, December 27, 99, uh, Shine and his mentor slash label boss Combs and other then-girlfriend Jennifer Lopez were involved in a shooting incident. The three of them were at the Manhattan nightclub named Club New York on West 43rd Street in Times Square. Witnesses said that a fellow named Matthew Scar Allen started an argument with Combs. Witnesses later testified that Allen also threatened to kill Shine. Okay, and the prosecutor charged that Allen, Combs, and Shine all drew guns 
and Shine shot three times in the packed nightclub. The resulting shooting, the shooting resulted in three bystanders being injured. Shine was accused by prosecutors, as was Combs, of drawing a gun in front confrontation. Shine said he acted in self-defense. Once uh, one injured witness said she saw both Combs and Shine shoot guns. Shine was accused of firing three shots that wounded three people. He maintained that he had fired into the air and did not believe it was bullets from his gun that injured the bystanders. Probably was Diddy, but Diddy made him take the fall, man. So... But the one thing is consistent is that there is no statute of limitations on murder. So if P. Diddy had actually killed this person or the person died as a result of their injury. Damn, man, she fell off, man. Look at look at all them wrinkles, man. Injuries. Now J-Lo could be brought into the mix as a co-defendant because of the fact that the person has passed away. But if the person is alive and maybe they had serious injuries, or whatever the case may be, statute of limitations would run. And it is highly likely at this juncture that statute of limitations have expired. Therefore, she does not have any criminal liability. But the reputational damage might be a different story because now she's branding herself as something very different than who she was back then. Back then, she was very much a Jenny from the block. She was, you know, dating a variety of hip hop artists. She was very much in that world. Now she's married to Ben Affleck. She's trying to, you know, portray herself in a different manner. Translation, she don't fuck with niggas no more. <laughs> she was, she don't fuck with Ja Rule no more. You know. <laughs> what was my motherfucking name? You remember that shit when she was doing them songs with Ja Rule and shit? She used to collab with all these, uh, you know, Fat Joe and all that shit. She don't fuck with none of these niggas no more. Shit changed. She went from Jenny, for, Jenny from the block to Jennifer. So now her past is going to come back to haunt her, and we don't know what that's going to mean for her future in terms of movie deals, music deals, or anything like that. So I think for her, it might be more reputational damage than criminal liability. Pearson says it's possible Jennifer Lopez could file some sort of defamation suit, but it's not likely. She could, but at the end of the day, when it comes to defamation in those types of cases, truth is an absolute defense. So if he has some sort of receipts to basically prove that, hey, I, I was right there, I saw her the same way in the filings, you saw a number of different screenshots and pictures that he submitted to support the different points that he was making. If he has some pictures to substantiate that she was carrying the gun, it, it, it's going to be very hard for her to say in good conscience in a court of law that, you know, this wasn't true, he's made this up, and now as a I predict she's not even going to bother touching it because her filing a lawsuit against him is going to give him even more attention. Mm. So I, I, she's probably just going to ignore it. Yeah, I don't think she's, she's going to address lost any money. Yeah, she's just going to ignore it. Like, whatever. Like, it'll go away. Because there's so much attention on Diddy right now that she don't even want to be involved with this. So I doubt that she'll even pursue anything. I've lost opportunities and things like that. There's going to be too much evidence out there connecting her to this that is going to be very hard for a jury to come back and say, yeah, he's making all of this up. But it's not just artists that Lil Rod named either. He specifically mentioned Prince Harry, the Duke of Sussex, in his court documents. It reads God damn, again? Mr. Combs was known for throwing the best parties. Affiliation with and or sponsorship of Mr. Combs' sex trafficking parties garnered legitimacy and access to political figures, artists, musicians, and international dignitaries like British royal Prince Harry. Why even name Prince Harry? There's no allegations against him or anything, but why bring him up? I think it may have been a move to bring more credibility to the filing and say that. I was going to say that's, that's no, 100% why you did I, I, it. I, I, saw on like a, a news thing that he wasn't involved in it and he was just a contact of Diddy because he will attend some parties but he wouldn't do anything like that's that he wasn't involved with anything okay but he would just that's, be there that's why he he name came up because he will just go to parties that that Diddy oh, okay. made right. up you know you know, basically, he was using, he being Diddy, was using his fame, fortune, and influence to insulate himself. So he was able to legitimize some of the activities he was doing by having these lavish parties, bringing all these A-list celebrities, but somewhere in a back room or yeah. somewhere in, in another wing, you know, horrible things were happening. Mm -hmm. So the fact that Prince Harry was there does not necessarily mean he was participating in what was happening. And just because you were at a party doesn't mean you know what's happening in every inch of the house. I mean, if you think about it, if the party's being thrown in a mansion, there are various floors and wings. So it is completely possible that he was there and did not participate. Now, you had said Prince Andrew, especially as a result of the allegations that came out in connection with the Epstein case, that they were close and that they traveled together and, you know, there was a person that alleged that he had um, had sexually assaulted her while she was underage. That would be a different story. But Prince Harry and the way that it was mentioned seemed to be very, again, just sort of trying to bring legitimacy and talk about these were the people that he, that Diddy surrounded himself by to protect himself. So Prince Harry has no formal accusations against him, but the name association could cause damage to his reputation. Even so, Pearson says it's not likely he files any sort of defamation. But people have been talking about Diddy's parties for fucking decades. Well, yeah. now we see why. It's possible that Prince Harry may be able to preserve his reputation. But again, just in light of everything him and the Duchess of Sussex, Meghan Markle, have been through, I, I truly really hope that, you know, he's able to completely distance himself, maybe make a statement, because again, since he's not necessarily under the uh, umbrella of the royal family directly, that... So in other words, Buckingham Palace would not be releasing a statement on his behalf. It would be him releasing a statement and saying, yes, I went to X party, but no, I never engaged in any inappropriate behavior or other details that he may see fit to share. Um, 
So that's going to be, you know, we're going to have to wait and see on that one. But again, since it was such a minuscule mention in the con greater context of this filing, he may be okay. Pearson compares Prince Harry's association with that of President Bill Clinton, who'd been seen with Jeffrey Epstein before his arrest. And there didn't seem to be much said around him actually engaging in activities, more that he was present at the parties. So I don't recall seeing a lot of fallout uh, on the part of President Clinton from that association. Speaking of Epstein, Low Rod's court docs draw a parallel between Diddy's alleged crimes and Jeffrey Epstein's. Epstein died by suicide back in 2019 when he faced numerous charges of sexual assault over the They knew he was going to tell on them boys. course of multiple years. His longtime companion, Ghislaine Maxwell, was charged and found guilty of sex trafficking in relation to her time with Epstein. She's currently serving out a lengthy prison sentence. Lil Rod compares Diddy's chief of staff, Christina Cahorum, to Ghislaine Maxwell, saying she ordered sex workers and prostitutes for Mr. Combs and oh, ordered and shit. distributed ecstasy, cocaine, Wee. GHB, ketamine, marijuana, and mushrooms to Mr. Combs and his celebrity guests who were present on his rented yacht and in his homes in LA, NYC, and Miami. Under these cases, when you have these high profile people that have been using people over years, these cases happen without a handler. R. Kelly had a handler, you know, uh, Epstein had a handler, Weinstein. I, and, and this is, I mean, it, it's crazy that I have to explain this, but yes, guys, when you're that famous, you don't actually talk to or deal with women on your own. You have someone that handles all that for you, bro. Like, the, like these celebrities all have like what I call a girl guy or a girl girl that like gets the women for these parties and stuff like that because as a celebrity you can't be caught talking to these people man because they can use it against yeah. you so you always have like a, a, you know uh one layer you're almost like one layer removed especially if you're trying to do crazy shit like these niggas are doing you know um, um, diddy was famous even in, in like school in, in the university for his parties and there is a bunch of interviews with like usher usher used to live with diddy Mm -hmm. um, when he was 13 years old, he lived for, with him for like a whole year in New York. Uh -huh. And he said in an interview that all he remembers from living with Diddy was his wild parties. <laughs> and then um, Exhibit got interview later on because he said in an interview... Exhibit the rapper? Yeah. Oh, okay. The rapper. <laughs> he said... <laughs> like, Pimp My Ride? <laughs> I love that show. Yeah. He said uh, in an interview ages ago that... that, that it, once he went to a party with Diddy and he didn't like that gay shit because he saw guys kissing dudes and stuff like that. Oh shit! And then he got addressed for that interview in another interview, and he did, he did he didn't want it to do anything with that. You know, he didn't want it to talk about it. Oh, and so he, he just, so he, he admitted there laughing. was like uh, like homosexual stuff yeah. going on. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah, because I, I I'll be honest, I didn't know that there was like this. Uh, yeah. You a know, lot of people have been saying that there's homoerotic like, stuff going on. Yeah, weird stuff with, with like Diddy's yeah. parties, but nobody wants to talk about it. Okay. Wow. And I think that's a big reason why no one's really coming to his defense right yeah. now. Like when Michael Jackson got accused, a bunch of people came to his defense. So, or even R. Kelly when he got accused. But like, you don't really see many people coming to Diddy's defense. No. Everybody has, in those scenarios of those powerful people, powerful men that are abusing other people, they have someone that does their dirty work. And it's usually not only just one person, it's several people who may have different duties. So again... Hence why they're now they're able to come in with the RICO statutes. Oh, you had XYZ people, because if I'm not mistaken, they only need to identify three to five people to be able to hit you with RICO. You know, seeing this this woman being his handler, being the person to get him drugs, being the person to, to uh, procure sex workers for him, being the person to basically be on cleanup duty in case of, you know, covering up or silencing people that might want to come forward. You know, that that that's not unusual. And she is also going to bear the brunt of criminal liability, just like Jillian Maxwell did and basically had to take the entire brunt of the criminal justice system alone because of the fact that, you know, um, Epstein committed suicide and was not able to be held accountable. And According to Pearson, Diddy and many of his associates will likely face federal charges, but it's not totally clear when. So this is the body cam footage, guys. When the guy I told you about that got arrested with the drugs uh, in Opelok Airport, you can see here, and I reacted to this with academics, this is a state officer here that's walking with this guy. You could tell from the badge that it's not federal. Um, and then she's also... Brand new video just... She puts him in the Miami-Dade vehicle, which is our Lake County police down Released here. shows the arrest of P. Diddy's alleged drug mule, who was taken into custody while trying to board the rapper's private jet. Why do I wear uniforms? We don't hear a word from Brendan Paul, the alleged drug mule, but he doesn't look too happy when he's put in the backseat of a squad car. Of course, <laughs> why would he look so happy? He thought he was going to be able to freak off, and next thing you know now, he's going to jail. Yeah. 
wow, this is really big. This is really big because you're thinking about this huge mogul. Like everyone knows who Puffy is, who Diddy is, who Puff Daddy is, who Sean Combs is. No matter what his name, you know who he is. Here's everything we know so far about that alleged drug mule, Brent. Right, we don't Paul, care about this nigga. Diddy case so far. <laughs> serious charge because you can do jail time having to deal with felony possession of narcotics but just because he just got charged with those two counts it doesn't mean that in the future he's not going to be charged with several other counts uh, it all depends where this investigation leads but again if i operate and that's going to be a conversation between the prosecutor yeah he was a yeah. he was a basketball player back in the day he was probably just, honestly guys they're, they're like sensationalizing it i think yeah, either he was just a plug a lot of uh, uh, he was a, just a plug or a guy that like liked to party and do drugs and he was with diddy like let's see here and also for the prosecutors to determine whether they're even willing to offer any type of cooperation. If anything, I was going to say, they might try to flip Here's him, if anything. about Brendan Paul so far. He's 25 years old and from Ohio. He played guard for Syracuse University's basketball team for two years before transferring to Fairmont State University. According to a post on his Facebook, he started making beats on his laptop during the pandemic, which kickstarted his work in the music industry. Eventually, he found Diddy and worked on Diddy's love album, Off the Grid, that was released last fall. Since his arrest a few days ago, Paul has been released on $2,500 bail. The rest of what we know about Paul comes from Lil Rod's February lawsuit that described him as a direct report of Diddy's chief of staff. That's Christina Corum, who's also listed as a plaintiff in the lawsuit. As this so-called direct report, Paul would allegedly, quote, be responsible for ensuring payment for sex workers in cash. He also allegedly, quote, Young Miami Jade, holy crap directly committed and perpetrated violations of Chapter 77 by aiding, abetting, and inducing the sex trafficking... And we talked about this, 18 U.S.C. 1591 A1 and A2, uh, which we showed you guys here, if I'm not mistaken. Bam. Right? The sex trafficking right here. And then A, uh, A1, right? Let's go back here. Oh, nope. A1 uh, and A2. So A1... In effect, the interstate commerce and A2. Boom. Benefits financially or by receiving anything of value from participation in venture, which is engaged in an act described in a violation of paragraph one. And then here is obviously affected in interstate commerce, et cetera, that we had been talking about. Venture and sex trafficking of Plaintiff Jones. So Plaintiff Jones is Lil Rod, who alleges Diddy sexually assaulted him and forced him to have sex with prostitutes. Lil Rod's lawsuit goes on to state that Diddy's associates. And let's look at this lawsuit. Actually, you know what? No, it's, I think it's a lot of, it's really graphic. But what is it? Lil Rod? The guy's name. So this guy and Cassie are pretty much the ones that fucking set this all off. What the hell? Is this him? Mm, oh, no. no. Hell no. Who, who this nigga? <laughs> oh, whatever. Fuck it. Including Brendan Paul would allegedly recruit, entice, coerce, harbor, transport, obtain, and provide Mr. Jones. Oh, as little well Rob. As My bad. Did I put little Rob? Yeah, I did put a lot. Whatever. Move on to some other bullshit. Commercial sex acts through means of force, threats of force, fraud, abusive process, and coercion. I'm sure that those people that are named in that lawsuit are very nervous right now. Very nervous, even more nervous now after the execution of that search warrant, but also nervous because he revealed about these secret recordings, and they're wondering whether they could have been secretly recorded. Are there recordings of them engaging in these type of activities? Because even though it may not be criminal, some of those activities, it still does tarnish their image, so they can still take a toll in terms of their branding. But in terms of the lawsuit itself, it's very damaging. You got to think that several companies have already distanced themselves from Puffy, and there haven't been any criminal charges. All you see is a civil lawsuit. So I think there's still going to be more things that are going to come about as a result of that civil lawsuit. But I think the most damaging guys again, get the likes Cassie's up. What are we lawsuit, at here? But more importantly, I think it's let's see here. Um, we are at this little little rods um, lawsuit that was filed. And in the civil lawsuit, Lil Rod specifically Guys, we need 3,500 likes, then I'm going to talk about how to get a federal search warrant. That Brendan Paul is listed almost 20 times. It's alleged that he's a drug mule. So he's getting different kinds of drugs for P. Diddy. He's also procuring prostitutes or sex workers. So if this is eventually investigated and it, prosecutors determine that there's enough to charge him, what sort of charges? So from, from my experience, guys, I don't think that Diddy is a drug trafficker, right? Is they're trying to allege you? I think more than likely this guy is the plug. He has the connections. He's the one that actually has the drugs on him, so if something like this happens, it's never on, you know, obviously the star. He could go ahead and take the hit, but that's more than likely what it is. Uh, I heavily doubt that Diddy's a drug trafficker. There's no need, and a ridiculous amount of risk. I think the drugs are a means to an end to have fun parties and do what he's trying to do, but I don't think he's actually out here like, I'm going to be selling, you know, kilos of coke. Nah. What do you face? Which well, is why that guy caught with such a, that guy got caught with a small amount. 
well, what you can see from the civil lawsuit that is possible that Little Rod would be serving as a witness in a, any criminal prosecution having to deal with Brendan Paul and him being a drug mule. And when you're talking about him being a drug mule, he is facing significant jail time. First off, anything over a day or two days or even a month for someone who's never been arrested is significant jail time. But I see Little Rod being one of the main witnesses if Brendan Paul were to be arrested for drug trafficking because he's saying that he has direct knowledge and photographs that he can authenticate of Brendan Paul being in possession of narcotics in these parties or these uh, gatherings that Puffy was having. Exactly. He's a plug. He just brings the drugs in from the fucking party. To be very clear, Brendan Paul doesn't face those criminal charges, only the controlled substance charges out of Florida. So we have his specific charges that he's facing for possession of these controlled substances. Are the investigators in that case then working with the federal investigators about this ongoing investigation into P. Diddy? Well, more than likely that the federal investigators, of course, are going to get the documents 100% they're and gonna work together. related to this arrest because they want to see if there's a, they're able to connect this to their bigger investigation. Again, we keep on saying that the investigation is into puppy. We don't have... What they're going to do is they're going to try to flip them. Hey, you want to go ahead and work off these drug charges? Cooperate with us. That's what the feds are going to do. Direct knowledge that it is, of course, that will make an emphasis because his homes were searched. But we believe that what they're wanting to do is do. This is a white kid from up north, played basketball, Division One. You know what? I want to go to a jail, bro. He's going to be an easy flip. That's what they're going to use him for. Guaranteed the feds are going to do that. Further investigation with law enforcement, the Florida case, to see if there's a way that they can tie his arrest to Puffy. But as of now, there has been no link between his arrest on Monday and to Puffy. Other people listed in the lawsuits or who are close with Diddy haven't been arrested or charged either, but it's possible they could face future charges. We've talked a lot about Diddy's associates because there are several people who are listed in multiple of these lawsuits. He's known to have friends who are with him a lot, almost like an entourage. If I'm one of those people right now and I know that there has been a search warrant executed, that Brendan Paul has been arrested, what sort of steps should I be taking or what is running through my mind? Girl, what they need to do is get an attorney immediately, and not just any attorney, but a <laughs> Agreed. criminal defense attorney with trial experience. Experience to know how to manage an investigation, how to manage what the next steps would be, how to manage to try to be proactive in trying to avoid uh, charges being brought against their client or to try to minimize their exposure. But I think they should be preparing that they may be called in at least for questioning or to be interviewed by law enforcement. So they should be preparing for that. Is it possible that we could also hear from other associates who knew Diddy very well and have seen some of these interactions? Absolutely. You got to think with law enforcement, the U.S. Attorney's Office, even with the District Attorney's Office, that they can issue subpoenas and issuing subpoenas to these people will require them to appear either before a grand jury or before a court um, to appear to be interviewed. That doesn't mean that they, they will appear. It doesn't mean that when they do appear, they'll be giving information, but at least that they will be required to appear. So what would be interesting is whether if there's a grand jury presentation is whether any of these individuals will be required to appear before the grand jury to give any type of testimony. But again, the most important part of what they should do is to get a defense attorney to be able to guide them through this process, because you don't want to give conflicted information to a U.S. attorney's office or to law enforcement and later on be prosecuted for giving that misinformation. But without any current charges, Diddy is free to do what he pleases, and that includes leaving the country. And as you guys saw, Wes Watson saw him the other day on Friday when we had Andrew Wilson on literally like an hour right before we went on the show he you saw diddy and he's in miami when diddy's los angeles and miami homes were raided by homeland security this week the singer's attorney released a statement saying quote we will always support law enforcement when it seeks to prosecute those that have violated the law hopefully this is the beginning of a process that will hold pleaded with diddy to stop um uh, real quick i'm gonna read the chats uh we got here um uh okay so uh blackie says myron what do you think about the theory that diddy is going to be the fuck oh no read that one uh ghost Ghosty Woosty goes, yo, Myron, love the show. Got some quick suggestion. Can we get more diverse and successful guests like Larry Fink, Joe, B Joe Biden, King Jung, Un, Harvey, Wangstein? Okay, bro. The fucking clown. Uh, Team Charles. Ruff says, uh, didn't say, <laughs> saying take that, take that since the 90s has a whole different meaning now. I know. That's funny. Uh, Ruff says, making the band's new season is going to be them doing th tests to destroy evidence and putting money on Diddy's books. Okay. Uh, Slop says, everyone in the Twitter space besides Ryan will cancel a move. From the, uh, bruh. <laughs> They're not better than people. They fight against props for not backing down. Yeah, man, it is what it is, bro. I was in a total space earlier with some emotional idiots. Uh, all or nothing. I believe in accountability. I think that women knew what they were doing. Diddy just has the money. Everybody, everyone a victim when the bag is involved. Facts. All or nothing. I believe in accountability. I think that women knew what they was doing. Yeah. Um, uh, you said that again, all or nothing. Okay, so three times hitting her and said she couldn't breathe after he stomped on her stomach. Just like Cassie, she alleges Diddy was mentally, emotionally, and physically abusive during their time together and claimed Diddy would compare she and Cassie, saying Hun is the bad one and Cassie is the good one. Hun did not take legal action against Diddy. However, her interview resurfaced around the web when Cassie filed her lawsuit against Diddy. And after this week's raid, previous celebrity interviews are also resurfacing and revealing more about Diddy's alleged conduct. In 2016, singer Usher, who had previously lived with Diddy when he was a teenager, told radio personality Howard Stern very curious things took place at Diddy's so-called puffy flavor camp. Usher, who was around 13 at the time, had moved to New York City and lived with Diddy, who was going 
owned by Puff Daddy for a year. The idea to live with Diddy came from L.A. Reid, who was Usher's manager. Usher said he went to live with Diddy for a chance to see the lifestyle and referred to the time period as a wild and crazy time in the 90s. And in a 2004 interview with Rolling Stone... Oh, uh, that's what you're, what you're referring to. Okay. Usher was quoted as saying, Puff introduced me to a totally different set of stuff, sex specifically. Sex is so hot in the industry. There was always girls around. You'd open a door and see somebody doing it or several people in a room having an orgy. You yeah. never know what's going to happen. But in 2016, when Stern asked whether Puffy's place was filled with chicks and orging nonstop, Usher responded, not really. It was curious and he got a chance to see things but didn't know if he could indulge and understand what he was even looking at. Usher said very curious things took place there that he didn't necessarily understand. As for if it would be a place Usher would consider sending his children to, this is what he had to say. 14 years old. You're a dad now. Would you ever send your kid to puffy camp? Hell no. <laughs> Meanwhile, a member of a girl group previously founded and managed by Diddy also this spoke show. out after Diddy's homes were raided by federal agents. On Monday, Aubrey O'Day, who was a part of the group Danity Kane, shared a statement about Combs after the raid saying, quote, what you sow, you shall reap. In December 2022, O'Day said she was fired from Danity Kane in 2008 because she wasn't willing to do what was expected of her, not talent-wise, but in... Oh, yeah, and this is like, I remember when he did, casted this show from back in the day, because you guys know, right? Uh, what show was that? This is the girl group. He did a whole show bringing them on. Um, Danny Kane's American girl group, whose most recent lineup consists of Aubrey O'Day, etc. Uh, years active, 2018 and 2020. And then this is them in 2014. Yeah, but oh, these girls are washed now. God damn. I didn't know who they were. Yeah, they, he had a TV show casting them. And then they also had Making the Band. I remember this. Oh, I heard Remember this shit? Oh, man. I Making a Band. This. this is old, man. Uh, from MTV, right? Yeah, from MTV, yeah. Season one. Season two and three. Dylon, Dylon, and Dylon in 2002. Other areas. She said she wasn't the only girl that was in those types of positions. This past September, Diddy announced his plans to reassign publishing rights to select Bad Boy Records artists, including O'Day's group Danity Kane. But O'Day claimed Diddy's deal came with strings attached, those strings being non disclosure agreements, also known as NDAs, that the artist had to sign. O'Day said the NDA agreement included the artist would not disparage Puff, Bad Boy, Janice Combs, Diddy's mother, Justin Combs Music, EMI Publishing, or Sony ever in public. And despite Diddy presenting the music group Danity Kane with their publishing rights, O'Day said that doesn't equal more money for the group, saying the deal would only bring her less than $1,000 in royalties. Another former artist of Diddy also reacted to this week's raid of Diddy's homes. There's Sean John back in the day. Rapper Mace called the raid Big Payback and said it was amazing it happened on the anniversary of Life After Death, which was the last album... Wow! I guess Mace and Puff don't get along no more. Posthumously released by Diddy's best friend, Notorious B.I.G. Mace and Diddy have a long and embattled history. Mace was previously signed to Bad Boy Records in the 90s and the early 2000s. He gave his publishing rights to Diddy for $20,000. When he attempted to get his catalog back years later, he publicly slammed Diddy when the mogul turned down Mace's offer to buy back his publishing for $2 million. Diddy ultimately gave the publishing rights back to Mace. Mace, who had previously worked with Diddy on hits such as Can't Nobody Hold Me Down and Mo Money Mo Problems, before going on to have a successful solo career, said he escaped Diddy. During his podcast, which he hosts with fellow rapper Cameron, he seemingly referred to the serious allegations against Diddy, saying, Everything now that we see playing out was all the things I escaped. Meanwhile, rapper 50 Cent taunted Diddy Damn. on mm -hmm. Instagram after the feds raided his homes. The two have been feuding since the early 2000s. 50 Cent, whose real name is Curtis Jackson, wrote, quote, now it's not Diddy do it, it's Diddy done. They don't come like that unless they got a case. The beef Damn. between the two seemingly dates back to 2006 when 50 released a diss track called The Bomb, where he claimed Diddy knew who shot and killed Biggie in 97. Since then, the two have made numerous comments on each other. When Cassie sued Diddy in November, 50 Cent said his production company was working on a documentary about the sexual assault allegations against Combs. Even posting a clip to social media featuring bad boy rapper Mark Curry alleging Diddy spiked women's drinks at parties. The Diddy allegations oh, also ventured into oh. the comedy world, where comedian Cat Williams also previously made comments about Diddy's alleged wild parties. In January, Williams spoke out about Diddy during Shannon Sharp's Club's Shay Shay podcast. Williams said, I gotta protect my integrity because if P Diddy be wanting to party, and you gotta tell him no. And just weeks prior to the raid, music producer Rodney Jones Jr., also known as Lil Rod, filed a $30 million lawsuit against Diddy, alleging sexual harassment and threatening him for more than a year. According to the suit, Jones claims he was subjected to possible drugging and rape, ritual humiliation, and being cheated out of more than $50,000 for work on Diddy's album. The suit also names actor- God damn! Cuba Gooding Jr. Jones believes Diddy was grooming him in an attempt to pass him off to Gooding, leaving the two alone in a studio on Diddy's yacht, where Gooding is alleged to have groped and fondled Jones when the two were left alone. Diddy has denied Jones's wow. allegations against him. It's not the first time Diddy Love, aka P. Diddy, aka Diddy, aka Puff Daddy, aka Puffy, <laughs> has had a brush with the law. The rapper and mega producer has been embroiled in legal controversy going back more than 30 years. In 1991, Combs helped promote a celebrity basketball game and concert at City College of New York. The gym reportedly had a capacity of a little more than 2,700 oh, people. 95. However, nearly yeah. 5,000 people showed up, and security couldn't control the crowd. When organizers closed the door and stopped letting attendees inside, people broke through the gym doors, rushing into the lobby, causing a stampede. Nine people were crushed. Diddy was huge in the 90s, guys.
to death at the bottom of the staircase, and more than 20 others were injured. Then New York City Mayor David Dinkins' administration published a more than 60-page report citing Combs for hiring inadequate and inexperienced security. Combs settled a slew of lawsuits from family members of attendees who died and finalized the last lawsuit in 2000. And for hip-hop and rap fans, it's hard to imagine, but at one point, Diddy, known then as Puffy and Suge Knight, were once friends. But that relationship soured, even turning violent. The animosity between Puffy and Suge started when Suge's friend and security guard Jake Robles was shot and killed outside an Atlanta nightclub after an argument with someone from Puffy's bad boy entourage. Entourage members with Puffs and Suge Knight's camp were celebrating Jermaine Dupri's birthday when an argument broke out between Bad Boy and Death Row Records' entourage. An Atlanta PD officer told the LA Times police escorted Puffy and his guests outside to leave the club and thought the coast was clear, allowing Knight and his entourage to leave. The officer, who was working security for the party, said all of a sudden Puffy's men came around the corner with a gun. The officer slash security guard told the Times by the time he got back to the front of the club, Shook's security guard had been shot multiple times. Damn. Robles died weeks later. Combs denied his- Did he out here fucking ordering hits and shit, man? What's going on, bro? His involvement in the shooting, but Shook Knight reportedly held him responsible for it. Three years later, Holmes and two other men attacked rapper Nas's manager, Steve Stout. According to Rolling Stone magazine, the attack happened after Stout sent MTV a version of Combs and Nas's Hate Me Now, which contained a scene showing Combs as Jesus Christ being crucified. Combs reportedly wanted the crucifixion scene deleted and was furious it played on air. Stout says Combs and two other men barged into his New York office and attacked him with a champagne bottle. He said he was left with a broken arm and jaw. Combs denied any oh, shit. Oh, He would later tell MTV, quote, I basically went to his office and what happened in his office I can't really speak about, but I can say this. The way I handled myself in his office was completely wrong, and I've apologized to Steve about that, and I felt like I just disappointed myself. Combs was charged with second degree wow. assault and criminal mischief and sentenced to just one day of anger management class. One day? A year after the Stout attack in December of 99, Combs and his then protege Jamal Barrow, better known as Shine, and Jeez. Diddy's then girlfriend Jennifer Lopez were partying at a club in New York when Diddy knocked a drink out of the hands of a man named Matthew Allen, also known as Scar. Scar got into an argument with Diddy and at some point someone threw money at Diddy's face and Scar threatened to kill Shine. Prosecutors say all three men drew guns and Shine shot three times into a crowded club. Three people were shot. Diddy and Jennifer Lopez left the scene but were later pulled over after running a red light. Police found a gun in the car which led to the then couple getting arrested. Jennifer Lopez was detained for 14 hours and was ultimately released from custody. Diddy and JLo would later end their relationship. Diddy got indicted on charges stemming from the incident, including charges of criminal possession of an unregistered gun and attempted bribery for allegedly trying to get his bodyguard, Anthony Jones, to claim the weapon was his. Diddy's protege, Shine, who was also arrested with Diddy and Lopez, was convicted of two counts of assault, reckless endangerment, and gun possession. Diddy was acquitted while Shine was sentenced to 10 years in prison. Damn. So is it possible Shine took the fall to protect Diddy? Attorney Austin Patterson says the power dynamics between Diddy and those around him may have been an influence. Well, I think you, you just said it. Their leader, their boss, a uh, p- person who is in a position of power. You, you, know, you paid um, him what for it, too. What bargaining power uh, did Sean have, Shine have, who I absolutely loved. I loved his album. Um, memorized every single song. Um, I was really sad what happened uh, to him. But, you know, what kind of what, what kind of power do they have? You know, like I mentioned earlier, it had long been rumored that um, Diddy does not financially take care of his artist. So, you know, what, what type of... Um, um, well, Shine, we know he paid for that. Place of power do they have? By example, if we look at JLo, she was pretty early on in her musical career. This was what, 99, 2000. You know, what power did she have, you know, um, at that point? So, and I think actually um, that was an opportunity for her to get out of the situation because um, from what I recall, after that whole nightclub situation, uh, the relationship was severed professionally and personally. And I think that um, more than anything, this was just an opportunity for her to get out of something that maybe she couldn't have gotten out of so easily before. Diddy's legal trouble and controversies didn't end there. In 2013, Diddy was allegedly involved in an altercation with rapper J. Cole during the 2013 MTV Music Video Awards after party. Multiple sources told Complex Magazine Diddy was visibly intoxicated when he approached rapper Kendrick Lamar about his rap verse on Big Sean's Control, where Lamar said he was the king of New York. Combs reportedly tried to pour a drink on Lamar before J. Cole stepped in and they got into a oh, shit. fight. Both J. Cole and Diddy denied a fight even took place. But J. Cole later rapped on his 2021 song, Let Go My Hand. My scrap was with Puff Daddy, who would have thought? The next year, in 2014, Diddy and Drake allegedly got into a physical dispute when Combs allegedly punched Drake over the rights to the beat that would later become Drake's 0 to 100. According Uh. to the Miami New Times, the two got into an argument that turned into blows during a DJ Khaled event in which Diddy allegedly told Drake, you will not disrespect me. But Combs would later deny punching Drake, telling The Breakfast Club, I didn't do nothing to Drake. Drake is my friend. Translation, I punched the fuck out of Drake. Six months after that incident, Combs reportedly got into an altercation with a UCLA assistant football coach. Diddy was present for his son, Justin. Yo, Diddy's a G on the, on the low, man. He's yeah. out here punching people, shooting people and shit. But he's over here like, Throwing Love. drinks and stuff. Yeah, do it, go crazy. Showed up at people's houses like, yo, I didn't like this music video, bro. Beating him up and shit. Justin Combs' football practice. When the coach told him. Diddy's a gangster on the low, man. What the fuck? Justin, I don't care if your dad's here. This is UCLA. I'm going to treat you just like I treat everyone else. Well, Diddy seemingly didn't like the coach speaking to his son that way. Diddy and Justin reportedly went to the coach's office after practice. An argument broke out between Diddy and the coach. Diddy was arrested for allegedly swinging a kettleball at the assistant coach and charged <laughs> with assault with a deadly weapon. But Diddy's reps claim he was acting in self-defense. Ultimately, prosecutors Yo! reduced Diddy's charges to a misdemeanor. In 2017, a former chef of Diddy's alleged she was regularly made to prepare and serve food to Diddy and his guests. While you they- know what's interesting? Like, all this stuff that they're mentioning didn't really hit the media like that. Yeah. 
So it goes to show how powerful Diddy really is. Cause like all this stuff is all new to me. Like I didn't know he did all this all crazy shit. Off. Yeah. Probably. Yo. They were engaged in sexual acts. At the time, a spokesperson for Diddy told Variety it was a frivolous lawsuit by a disgruntled ex-employee who was fired for cause. However, in 2019, the lawsuit was settled for an undisclosed amount. In 2019, mm -hmm. Diddy's ex-girlfriend, Gina Hunt, told controversial blogger Tasha K Diddy physically abused her throughout their five-year relationship. She claimed Diddy stomped her on the stomach to the point she couldn't breathe and also punched her in the back of the head. In the podcast, Hunt told Tasha K Diddy was mentally, emotionally, and physically abusive. She said Diddy would often compare her and his then-girlfriend at the time singer Cassie to one another, saying Cassie was the good one and Hun was the bad one. Hun said at the time everyone in Diddy's circle knew and allowed the abuse to occur. Those sentiments were echoed in singer Cassie Ventura's 2023 federal lawsuit against Diddy. The singer who had dated Diddy on and off for a decade accused the mogul of rape and abuse. In one incident, Diddy allegedly pushed her into a car, then proceeded to kick her in the face repeatedly. In another claim, an intoxicated Diddy allegedly gave Cassie a black eye after she tried to leave a hotel room. The hotel security camera footage captured the incident, but Diddy allegedly bought it off for 50... You guys can see here, what's the root cause of all this? Drugs and alcohol, man, mm -hmm. changes you, turns you into another person, man. So, you know. You know, one of the allegations, she said that Diddy will, like, uh, have her have sex with other men and he just yeah. make her uh, watch. Yeah, that's weird. Thousand dollars. Cassie alleged Diddy had a pattern of abuse, including controlling every aspect of her life, from what she wore to where she lived. The suit alleged Diddy forced Cassie to have sex with male sex workers. And Diddy allegedly supplied Cassie with different drugs, including ecstasy and ketamine. The suit stated the drug abuse was so bad, Cassie suffered from memory loss. And when she went wow. to the doctor's office, her MRI results were not sent to her, but obtained by Diddy instead. The suit was ultimately settled a day after it was filed for an undisclosed amount. I wasn't surprised that he settled. I think he looked at um, the reaction from the public and it was swift and it was not pleasant for him. And I think he saw um, that it wasn't going to go away. So he settled. With the Diddy thing, man, I mean, with Cassie, I think Cassie definitely got to take a little bit of responsibility here because... She obviously was an adult and she could send it to a lot of this stuff after the fact she's mad and wants to come back and say some shit. But I mean, the other stuff is crazy. But again, I don't understand um, what advice he was giving. But she absolutely has to bear some of that responsibility, man. And I'm sure it was some learning advice, but you know, had it been me, I think I would have been like, sir, I don't think this looks good. So. But did Cassie's lawsuit peel back the curtain to reveal the writing was always on the wall for Diddy? Attorney Offie Patterson believes so. I don't think the allegations were as loud as they were, I believe, that day in November. I remember I was boarding a flight to London and I was reading a, a Cassie Ventura's petition and I was like, oh, this is very loud. This is very explicit. I don't think the allegations had ever been that loud before. So I think people would always give him the benefit of the doubt because of his legacy in the community, because of what he's done. Um, you know, he had, of course, music and then we know clothing and then we know alcohol and he had just a foothold in so many areas. So without some solid evidence, I think people always gave him the benefit of the doubt. And Cassie's suit wasn't the end of it. Following the settlement, Diddy was hit with additional lawsuits from women claiming he sexually assaulted them. One Jane Doe claimed that Combs and singer Aaron Hall raped her and an unidentified friend in the early 90s. But a spokesperson for Diddy called the claims fabricated and a money grab. Then just last month, a former employee of Diddy's, Rodney Jones Jr., also known as Lil Rod, accused the rapper of sexual assault while working on Diddy's 2023 album. According to the suit, Jones claims he was subjected to possible drugging and rape, ritual humiliation, and being cheated out of more than $50,000 for work on Diddy's album. The suit also names actor Cuba Gooding Jr. Jones believed Diddy was grooming him in an attempt to pass him off to Gooding, leaving the two alone in a studio on Diddy's yacht where Gooding is alleged to have groped and fondled Jones when the two were left alone. And that wasn't the only high profile name attached to the suit. Jones claims Diddy used his access to celebrities, famous athletes, political figures, musicians, and international dignitaries like Prince Harry to draw guests to Diddy's parties, which were seemingly breeding grounds for alleged sex trafficking. Prince Harry is not a defendant in the suit, nor has he been accused of criminal acts. However, City Girls rapper Carisha Brownlee, aka Young Miami, has been named <laughs> in Lil Rod's $30 million lawsuit. She's accused of transporting pink cocaine on a private jet from Miami to Virginia. And that's not the only claim against rapper Young Miami. Jones's lawsuit claims the City Girls rapper and 50 Cent's ex-girlfriend Daphne Joy were sex workers for Diddy and paid monthly stipends. At this time, Daphne Joy and Young Miami have not responded to the suit. However, Daphne Joy's ex, Curtis Jackson, aka 50 Cent, responded with this post to Instagram. I didn't know you were a sex worker, you little sex worker. Yo, this shit is a movie. <laughs> yeah, this guy's a fucking cloud, bro. <laughs> with the caption, I didn't know you was a sex worker, you little sex worker. LOL. Yo, this stuff is a movie. So with nearly 30 years of different legal battles, why did it seemingly take so long for a reckoning when it came to Diddy? Patterson credits Cassie for opening the floodgates. I think it's the different type of uh, people. Yeah, I think the Cassie lawsuit and uh, the Little Rod lawsuit definitely opened, opened up the yeah. floodgates. Yeah. Who are involved in um, the music industry. You know, my friends and I were always talking, like, when is it going to... Little Rod's had pictures in it. I think Little Rod's was, is way stronger than Cassie's. Cassie, I think she's just a dumb bimbo that did dumb shit and now she regrets it. Mm -hmm. Little Rod, I think, like, uh, no, nah, man, like, he... he is different with that. Well, they've been together music, for 10 when, years, um, so she's ex Exactly. They had like a romantic you know, relationship, consider, um, yeah. Uh, the they are pretty much married. Wild, wild. Her and Diddy. Less, but, you know, she that's definitely a lot, a lot less should have like some footage or something. It wasn't in the lawsuit. I don't think she had pictures and stuff like that like this other guy had. She probably The music industry is just, I, I don't know what's, what's crazier than that, but definitely music is. And I think it just always goes back to 
um, bargaining power and you know um the you probably gave the feds a lot of industry, info though you know, what are what are their resources um so i think uh you know and, and let's talk about like their unions you know um you know who, who do they have to go to collectively to organize and to support them especially if um you know they're going to be the poster child for bringing somebody down you know what are their collective resources to supporting them so i think that's why it's just it's taken so long um in music and again as far as puppy goes you know um these alleged victims thank god for cassie because she actually put her name behind it and i think she empowered and enabled a lot of people to come out and it's starting with um it's definitely starting with puppy but could we see an arrest for the hip-hop mogul and mega hit maker patterson says absolutely I've been looking at all of the um, just the YouTube videos and the interviews that his former employees and I mean um, bodyguards and people closely associated with him have been giving. And one thing that's um, I guess been repeated multiple times is the fact that um, Diddy has trophies. He keeps videos of everything. So I think um, so, after the raids, a lot is going to come out. Um, it was said that there are um, secret uh, cameras in every room. Yeah, a lot is. Going and to if there is one person who is underage, um, he's he's going to be charged. But I suspect they're going to find a lot on those videos. Um, and and uh, the arrest may not be you know next week, and it may not be next month, but it's definitely forthcoming. Do you see a um, a future of his employees also being arrested too? Yes. After Monday's raid, Diddy's lawyer issued a statement saying, in part, there was a gross overuse of military level force. There is no excuse for the excessive show of force and hostility. All right, cool. So um, let's see what the likes are at, guys. Um, otherwise, we're just gonna we're just gonna go ahead and close the show because you guys don't get the goddamn likes up, man. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, people be mentioning in the chat that like, what happened with Kim Porter. Kim Porter was uh, also had like footage of of Diddy's like sexual assault, but she Did died. She? She died, yeah. Okay. So that was a big thing, too, um, to the allegations. I do have a question, though. What do yeah. you think, or how do you think these uh, allegations in, like, civil suits are going to affect Diddy's reputation and uh, business? Well, his reputation, I think, is definitely, uh, you know, at this point, definitely pretty much destroyed. Uh, but um, I know he already sold his shares, I think, for Revolt. Mm -hmm. Um He's probably going to start liquidating stuff soon. Um, and I anticipate that he's going to have charges within a year. What about his businesses, though? Because he has, a, like, a, a like a clothing brand and everything. Yeah, he's probably going to, you know, move it over to somebody else to handle it or whatever while he deals with this. Maybe his sons will overtake it. But uh, mm. in general, I just don't predict that he's going to be. Um, he's probably going to be dedicating all of his time to getting a legal team fighting this stuff because I, I, I – I predict within this year, guys, that he's going to probably be charged yeah. is, what, is what I predict. So um, we'll see what ends up happening. Uh, let's see. Guys, 3.5K likes, and I'll explain how a search warrant is obtained. If not, I'm going to end the stream, and maybe I'll play some Overwatch. You guys want an Overwatch stream, maybe? Uh, let's see here. We got 5,000 Y'all Ninjas in here. Only 2.9K likes. Come on, guys. Get the goddamn likes up. Uh, let's see here if I got any chats. Uh, Mickey, uh, Mick goes, have you seen the series on Netflix called The Queen of the South? It's about a drug handler that ends up taking over a Mexican drug cartel. You know if it's based on a real story love from DK. I have not seen it and I'm not familiar, but I'll have to check it out then. Um, so I can answer that question. That's probably. very famous. Oh, uh, is it? Latin have you America. seen it? No, it's got like, it's, it's like a Mexican novel. It's, it's very like fiction. Okay. It's much fiction, yeah. Uh, Long Live Gaming says, thoughts on Bohemian Grove? It exists. Uh, RZ goes, hey, Myron, any EDC recommendations for a 20-year-old? Whatever you feel comfortable with, bro. Whether it's a Glock or whatever, just get the gun that you're comfortable with and that you can comfortably conceal every day and it doesn't bother you. Um, Roll Wave says, the downfall of Walt and Daisy got Chen must be studied. What happened? What? That's nobody's business. What are they talking about? That's oh. nobody's business. Oh, in my head, I'm like, wait, what are you talking about? <laughs> okay. Uh, do you think they took all his phones and computers, etc.? Yeah, they definitely did, definitely. RZ. Uh, Martin Gann, yo, Martin, you hear that Bam and Kevo's son got killed? No, I didn't hear about that. Uh, damn. Uh, I, I hope uh, he's okay. Um, Slop Life says, just sent in a super chat on stream labs. I'll catch the replay tomorrow. FNF on top. Thank you, bro. I appreciate that. Um, Doge Poster says, uh, I think Jonathan Pollard's spying counts as a criminal enterprise. You guys are fucking clowns, though. Yeah, you know, a little, uh, actually, a little on yeah. Diddy's background. So, um, he got discovered by Andrew Harrell, okay. Andrew Har Harrell, yep. who, who, who died, um, I think, in 2020. And that guy was discovered by Clyde Davis, <laughs> who is, uh, yeah. And he founded Artista Records, who was the record that Diddy um, 
was joined with to open up um, Bad Boy Records because he got fired from Uptown Records when they didn't want it to publish um, the uh, uh, Biggie's album. Um, I, what, what was the name of the album? Can't remember. Uh, um, which which his first album? Ready it, to die. Yeah. Ready to die. Ready to die. Ready to die. Yeah. Die's first album. They didn't yeah. want it to publish it because it was like very explicit. Uh, explicit. Um, with the lyrics. So they didn't like the lyrics, like the executive from Upturn Records. Mm. So they fired Diddy because he, he he wanted to publish it, and then he opened the um, Bad Boy Records. Mm -hmm. um, but he got, uh, he, he opened it with the people that that fired him. So That's funny. That's kind of like, you know, weird. And people will say that um, Clive Davis would ask for favors for from Andrew Harrell, and then Andrew Harrell will do that with Didi because they will see him as his mentor. So if you if you search for Didi's background, like did you dive deep in it, you'll find like very weird deep stuff, like dark stuff. I recommend you to watch this documentary. Uh, it's called Surviving Didi by Surviving Swamp Didi? Let yeah. me pull it up on screen real quick. By Swamp Stories. Um, it's an hour long, but guys, it's really worth it because it tells you everything about his background. This one right here? Okay, let me uh, yeah, that one right let me there. show it on screen for the people. It's really, really good. Right here, guys. Well, yeah. Clive took a special liking to Andre and took Oh, I was watching oh, a little bit of this and, while I was streaming Clive, on Overwatch. And that Clive da Davis guy was bisexual, so. Uh, no surprise. Yeah. Clive Davis. Just yeah. go to Wikipedia and click early life and you guys will see what I'm talking about. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah. I was watching a little bit of this while I was Overwatch streaming like yeah. a week ago. And it's very good because this guy put uh, puts a lot of interviews. This Usher interview, the exhibit one that I mentioned. Ah, um, that's where some, you saw this stuff. Yeah. Okay. And some other uh, people that really knew it is on a personal level. So yeah, definitely you should watch it. Okay. It's really really good. He posted it like two months ago, so it's run. Oh, so fresh. It, it before obviously before all this stuff happened. Yeah. Yeah. Probably he did it probably after. But it's the, very it's very fresh. So. You guys definitely should watch it. All right, cool. Uh, let's see here. Um, what are we at with the likes, guys? If not, guys, I want to just close this thing out. Uh, are we at 3.5? We're at 3. Point, hold on. Let me refresh this, this thing. Because what did the poll say? 80%, yes. Um, 80% wanted it? Mm hmm. Oh, I'm scrolling back up to see if I could even find it. Okay, I can't even find it. But 80% wanted it? Mm hmm. All right, we're at. We got 4,800 you guys watching on YouTube, another 3,100. We got 7,000 plus, man. You guys, okay, 3.2, 3. close enough. I'll do it. All right, so guys, <laughs> this is how you do a federal search warrant. So it looks like this, right? Uh, let's go ahead. We're going to go ahead and use the Trump search warrant as an example for y'all. All right? So first, right, you're going to obviously go... Um, with the affidavit, right? The affidavit is going to say, I, such as being duly sworn, etc." You give your your background, and then you go into uh, how the case started, source of evidence, statutory authority and definitions, and then you're going to get into, most importantly, the probable cause, okay? So the probable cause, guys, right, is where you're going to go into all the information that led to you getting the um, search warrant. And a lot of the times, it's extremely extensive, right? As you can see here, this agent is listing out a bunch of redacted crap, which I broke down to search one in another video, by the way, guys, if you guys want to check it out. But I'm using this as an example for y'all about what a search warrant looks like. Let me see if I can get a better one. Hmm. There we go. Okay. It. So, perfect. Okay, so they sealed it, right? Which is why you can't find a Diddy search warrant. I tried searching it for it, guys, which it was sealed, right? Um, sealing order. Here's what a search warrant looks like. Right? So it goes, man, like the goddamn video, man. Ain't nobody breaking this shit down for you. I'm giving you all so much goddamn sauce in this episode. It's fucking crazy. We're breaking down HSI case numbers. We're breaking down how HSI works. We're going over um, search warrants, federal cases, everything. Rico, we're explaining it like the goddamn video, man, on Rumble and on YouTube. This has probably been one of my most educational videos of this year so far. Okay? Maybe, if not ever. All right? So I'm really about to break this shit down for y'all and teach you guys how these search warrants operate. And this is a federal one. All right? Like the goddamn video. All right. So, again, this is the search warrant for Donald Trump's house over in 
Mar-a-Lago, I'm using it as an example because there's not many search warrants published on the internet. So first they're gonna show what is being searched, right? Here's the case number. Now remember, this is not to be mistaken with the HSI case number. This is a case number for the court system, okay? Fiscal year 2022, MJ means a magistrate judge signed it, and then this is the case number right here. And then BER a lot of times stands for the, I think, uh, the judge's uh, initials, right? Located in the Southern District of Florida, right, because that's where the search was executed. So in this case, there was a search warrant filed in Miami, right, for Diddy in the Southern District of Florida, and then there was another one filed in Los Angeles uh, with the probable cause. And each affidavit has different probable cause, guys, because you need evidence specific to the area that you're going to search, right? So they're going to put here what they're searching for, evidence of a crime, contraband, etc. And then you have to put the violation. So right in Diddy's thing, again, this is the Trump one. So obviously it has willful retention, blah, 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 all this crap, right? But in Diddy's one, it's going to probably be 18 USC 1591, which we went over earlier, right? The sex trafficking of a child or by force, fraud, or coercion, or sex trafficking in general, okay? That's probably more than likely what is on the HSI affidavit, right? And then it's going to see that the agent, right? They, in this one, they blurt out the agent's name, uh, but this is the special agent FBI. In this case, it's going to be an HSI agent, West Palm Beach, etc. Then, with the search warrant, because this is the actual warrant itself that gets signed by the judge. This is the actual warrant. In support of a warrant, you need an affidavit, okay? An affidavit goes into the agent's background, the training and experience, um, it's the back, like all this stuff, source of evidence, statutory authority and definitions. I ain't gonna lie, most search warrants don't have this crap in it, but in this case, they're being very thorough because they're searching the former president's house, so they're gonna be add this stuff in. And then the meat and potatoes is right here, guys, the probable cause, okay? Now, for you to get a search warrant, guys, to search someone's house, you need actionable information that is somewhere between two to four weeks old, right? Now, with drug warrants, right, it's typically... One to two weeks, you know, maybe you did a drug buy, then you want to go ahead and have that house searched. You need the evidence to be fresh. But if it's not drugs, maybe something else where you have an informant that went in there or took pictures, whatever it may be, maybe it could be a month. But the point is that you need sources of information that could give you real-time information that evidence of a crime is going to be located at that residence. Why is that? Well, guys, to search a home, right, if you're going to look at the Fourth Amendment, right, the Fourth Amendment is this, Right? The right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated and no warrant shall issue but upon probable cause. Supported by oath or affirmation, which is exactly what this is from an agent, probable cause, this affidavit, right? He's swearing that this is true to the best of his knowledge. Um, and particularly describing the place to be searched and the persons or things, right? So in this case... Think of load up. Right, this is the affidavit. Then exhibit one. This is them show, saying that, hey, president, you need to give us this. Attachment A, boom. This is what they're going to search. Every search warrant has this, guys, right? Attachment A, which is what we plan to actually search. And you have to describe the place. So in Diddy's search warrants, guys, it's going to describe the place, where it's located, what, uh, what it looks like, etc. Attachment B, what they intend to take. Okay, um, so in this case, it's going to be physical documents, whatever. And Diddy's stuff is probably going to be cell phones, um, laptops, uh, video surveillance footage, etc. We know that HSI took the, 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 um, the CCTV footage from his mansions as well. So that's where they're going to put this. Every search warrant has these things. You have an attachment A, the property to be searched. Attachment B, what is to be taken once the search is conducted. And then attachment C which is the affidavit that we went over. And then most importantly about the affidavit is the probable cause section, which is where you list out all your evidence as to why you need to search this place, okay? Um, and with a federal search warrant, guys, it's got to be extremely thorough and extensive, which is why the fact that they were able to execute two different search warrants in two different districts, especially in Los Angeles, where I know they're super liberal and they don't issue out search warrants easily, that tells me that they have a bunch of evidence. And they got a lot of witnesses that gave them real-time information so they could search the house. And the reason why, guys, because like I was saying before, when you look at the Fourth Amendment, as we were describing before, right, the right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, and papers, the house is at the top of the echelon when it comes to what the Fourth Amendment protects. Your home is your castle, right? There's a reason why you can shoot someone when they come in. It's because it's your, it's your, it's where you sleep. It's where you lay your head. It is the highest level of being protected by the Fourth Amendment. So 
by the feds being able to raid two of Diddy's homes, that tells me that they have a fuck ton of evidence for them to be able to do so. Okay? Give me wasn't a chat if that all made sense and you guys understand now uh, how search warrants are written, what goes into a search warrant, attachment A, B, and C, um, and the Fourth Amendment and why it's so difficult to get one, especially at a federal level, guys. Give me wasn't a chat if that makes sense. And I was using the Trump one to kind of give you guys an example of how a search warrant's done because there's not many published search warrants on the internet like that. So every search warrant is written the same. You know, obviously there's different crimes, but you guys get the idea. And also that's why I think um, there's definitely informants involved here. All right. Looks like you guys. Uh, so I want to see what the chat thinks here. I want to get you guys. If you're watching on Rumble, open up a YouTube tab. I'm taking a poll right now. I want to get your guys' thoughts. Now that you guys have looked at the case. All right. I want you guys to tell me what you think is going to happen. Do you think Diddy is finished, guys? Let's see what y'all think. Myron, does Diddy look Somalian to you, or is it just me? I'm East African like, like you. Uh, he does have some East African features, you know, with the, with the dark eyes and shit like that. Pause. Uh, what's good, Myron? I love the channel. Also, I'm part of John MLD Mask Empowerment Network. It's crazy to see the old webinar videos of you in there before you became the legendary fit. I appreciate that, bro. Uh, yeah, shout out to John MLD. Uh, do you know if there's a lot of Mexican cartels operating in the USA, Sinaloa, etc.? Uh, not necessarily cartels operating, guys, but they obviously have their sources here that facilitate the drug trafficking. Which, by the way, if you guys want more of that, uh, watch this video. Uh, hold on one sec. If you guys, if you guys really enjoy Fed Reacts, go check out. My guy, Johnny Mitchell, he just dropped the interview with me that we did. Uh, boom, right here. Inside the battle against cartel smuggling, ex-Homeland Security agents, shocking revelations. Boom. So I'm there, right? I'm on duty. They say, hey. They're and this is uh, an interview that we did together a few weeks ago, man. It was a great interview. Uh, shout out to Johnny Mitchell. It's a connect. This is YouTube channel right here. We went for two and a half hours, man. It was a good time. So uh, Go check that out if you guys want more information on how cartels work, how human smuggling works. I go into great detail in this interview. I'll drop the link for y'all in the chat right now, by the way, if you guys want to check that out. Boom, there's in the Rumble chat, and then here, boom, in the YouTube chat. Uh, okay, 81% of you guys think Diddy is cooked. Holy, okay. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Um, cool. Guys, I think that brings us to the end of today's podcast. Give me ones in the chat if you guys learned a lot. Give me twos if you didn't learn anything. Uh, let's see what y'all think. And then, Angie, let's uh, give you, uh, what do you think? What's your final thoughts on this thing? Yeah, what, well, what do you think is going to happen to Diddy? Or? Yeah, he's definitely cooked, like these guys say. Uh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> like, there's no escape for this guy, unfortunately. I think he's going to get indicted soon. Yeah, over the next few months. Yeah. Pretty sure. I think before the end of the year, too. Okay. Well, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, guys, this is it for this case. Um, you guys been requesting a lot the the Nickelodeon um the Nickelodeon, do that one next week. The Nickelodeon scandal. I kind of want to wait because I know within like the next few weeks of of, of the fir the beginnings of April, there is um like more episodes to come on and right now I just was watching inst looking at Instagram and there there's been uh, some other actors that had come out um okay. saying their parts on that so we can we're more, we might have more information on that later on uh, but it, i watched the documentary it's really good although it's, it's dragged a lot like like yeah it's too long it, they should have done it like in one episode and you know not make it that long but it's really good um i've studied like this case truthfully like i've watched everything even like drake's bell's um allegations and case he got he, he also got prosecuted for for child endangerment, and he played it. He played it guilty for that. So that's also very interesting. 
Um, but yeah, we, we probably will we'll do it later on. And yeah, that's it for this. And follow Fan Reacts on Instagram, TikTok, and FNF Reach, since these guys don't have inter- Instagram anymore. Sí. Follow their TikToks. Hopefully, we'll get it back soon. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah we're working it. on it. Uh, you and Angie for uh, such a great job with Fed Reacts. Really know your stuff, man. Thank you, Uncle Luke. Uh, have you done a breakdown of Sinaloa Cartel? No, but that will come soon. Uh, and then also, Mark, can you and Angie cover the Colorado Batman Massacre? Oh, did you put that on the list? Yeah, that's on the list. It is on the list. Okay. You guys been requesting that, yeah. Okay. The Griselda Blanco is going to come with the Colombia Cartels, too. Yes, we are going to do that um, for sure. And Griselda the Cocaine Blanco. Cowboys is going to be linked to that. So that's also coming. Can you guys. do a breakdown of Bohemian Grove Show from Vegas Go Padres? Uh, okay, thank you, Ivan Leal. We will do that in the future with the more conspiracy stuff. Uh, but other than that, guys, hope you guys enjoyed today's episode, man. Um, I might stream Overwatch. What time is it right now? It's 11.43? Damn, it's about to be high noon. 17 minutes to 12 <laughs> o'clock. It might be high noon, man. We might have to go ahead and do this Overwatch stream. Let's see here, man. I don't know. It's high noon. Let me see what the chat wants. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm going to see what the chat wants. Today is the, the chat day. Uh... Do you guys want an Overwatch stream? You know that Chad's going to say yes. If you guys say ones, I'll do it. If two, nah. Ones if you guys want an Overwatch stream. Two if you guys don't. I know some of y'all don't care for Overwatch. It is what it is. I enjoy it. I think it's fun. I'm a diamond, by the way, guys. I'm a diamond. I'm, I'm diamond three or diamond four hey, right now. Hey, what do you want food? What am I can right start now? ordering. Oh, yeah, yeah. Order the, yeah. Order okay. The uh, matter of fact, what rank am I in Overwatch? I think I'm a diamond three or four. I caught up, baby. All right, you guys want an Overwatch stream? I guess so. I guess me and Chinaman, the beatings will continue. Going to have to keep smacking kids around. All right. We Overwatch gang then. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode of... Uh, of um, oh, Okay, we're... Uh, uh, let's see. I'll, I'm opening up Overwatch right now so you guys can look at my, uh, my rank. I got banned for two weeks, man. So I, I just got out of Overwatch jail, as y'all can see here. Let's see here. I am... I'm a diamond three. Let's go, baby! I'm out here. I've got you in my sights. All right? I'm the Monko. I'm going to support Silver, though, which is trash. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work on that. I'm going to bring it up. I, I just don't play support as much, as much as I used to. And then Open Q is... Uh, is... Um, I'm a gold. Y'all want me to run a game right now? Y'all want me to run a game right now? Y'all want to see this? I'm live on YouTube. You guys want me to play one game? For some of y'all that are over here watching... Uh, Fed reacts, you guys might be able to see a side of uh, <laughs> see me destroy some kids on Overwatch. Y'all want me to run a stream right now? Or, or run one game right now while we're up on this Overwatch stream? Or this uh, Fed reacts stream? Play one? Oh, Lord. We gonna do this? Let's see. Damn, y'all wanna see one? Alright, let's do it, baby. We'll do one. We'll do one game. I'm gonna have to watch my language, though. We're on YouTube, guys. <laughs> so the Fed Reacts portion is done, guys. If you guys are done, uh, we're, we're going to do it. Uh, I go going to get bad. I go go crazy. Let me switch my sound stuff so you guys can actually hear the game here. Give me one sec. Hold on. I'm just going to, um, I'm not going to screen share. I'm just going to go main cam real fast for y'all because we're doing this thing impromptu. So let me go ahead and start switching the sound and everything else like that for y'all. Uh, so you guys can actually hear the game. Oh, we got a game. Bear with me, guys. I'm literally just switching. Because I got to switch my whole sound thing up right now for y'all. Bills is calling. Bills is calling? What's he saying? Hey, Bills. Wait. What do you say? I don't know. I can't hear you. All right, guys, give me ones in the chat if you guys can hear the game right now. Okay. Can they can yeah. they hear the game? Um, sorry, my bad. My Yo. Um, okay. So the quick way to do it is just to send it to the Roadcaster Pro main, I think. Okay. 
Yeah, hold on. Let me go screen share real quick so they can see what's going on here. Uh, let's see here. The game is up now, guys. So you are getting a preview right now of how I do this. They said there's no... Okay, you can't hear the game. They can hear me, but they can't hear the game. All right, I'm going to adjust the audio right now on that. I'm going to adjust the audio here, guys, in a second. Let me just... I got to... Oh, shit. All right, here we go. I should have probably done a quick play first. Let me adjust this real fast. I'm good. Yeah, man, it's real trying to pay. That's required. What was that, Bills? Oh, no, my bad. I'm at a, I'm at a gas station, bro. Don't, don't worry about it. They, they can't hear the game right now or no? No, nah, no sound. It's no sound, which, is, which might be a good thing, but we yeah, had no sound, but... So they can't hear the game. They can only hear me, uh, pl uh, my voice right now. Yeah, they can only hear your voice for sure. <laughs> okay. I just died twice. I'm going to have to go soldier to carry this because when McCree, I got to focus. And right now I'm like trying to do the sound and everything else like that for these guys. So no, no game sound. I got to fix this. Hmm. Yo, can I go in OBS and switch it, uh, Bills, where like um, it's, it go like change the scene, you know what I'm saying? Okay. All right, let me let me do that. I think I could do it now. Hold on. I go scene collection. Hold on, let me see here. Now it should be. Now they should be able to hear the game. I think. Let me know if they can hear the game now. Chat, give me ones if y'all can hear it now. Can they hear the game now, Bills? They hear the game now? Perf. Okay, I just fixed it. Nice, nice, nice. So check and hear the game now. All right, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, I just, all I did was switch on the... Okay, now I can actually focus on destroying these kids now. All right. That aim is impeccable, though. That tracking is on point. It sucks on what that dragon was. See, guys, we about to win this shit now. Alright, they're gonna try to push in. Yeah, shut up. You're dead. These kids are getting melted. Alright. Yo, team, I got visor for the last fight here. Alright. Yo, anybody in team chat? Peace be upon you. No, anybody in team chat here? Okay. Nah. Oh, okay. I, I heard you, Milk. No, you didn't, bro. Come on. Okay, that was a low IQ comment. This idiot could die. Good finish. Oh my god. What the hell, bro? Oh, 
All right, good. We want it. We want it. All right. The beatings will continue. All right, chat. So as y'all can see here, um, we got the audio good now, guys. We're lit. Uh, we're obviously, uh, I ain't going too crazy because we're on YouTube right now. But what I'll do is I'll uh, start up another stream on, on Rumble after this. Right now I'm playing Soldier 76, guys. And you. One of my uh, I wouldn't say better heroes. I like to play hit scans. Are you? Greetings. So now I'm gonna switch to. Now that I can actually focus, I'm gonna switch to McCree. McCree's actually my favorite character, but I wasn't able to focus last time because I was so focused on the sound and stuff. So let's let's see here. And by the way, guys, I've been playing mouse and keyboard now for approximately six to eight weeks. So it's still fairly new to me, but I'm I'm getting better with it. Get better with it, as y'all can see. Who the hell? Oh. Such BS, man. All right, Diva's out of mech. What the? Bro. This freaking Hanzo, man. Uh, let's get a Zari. Get this diva out of here, bro. Just standing right in front of us. Gotta push in, guys. Dragon coming, dragon coming. Watch out. Hanzo's on the right. Out of position. We can kill him. Bomb. Come on, let's go. One dead. Good shit, good shit. On the, uh, three of them on the right. Three of them on the right. Ana. Let's go. All right, we take this shit back, man. Get the diva, she's staggered. You kids suck, kid. Let's go, we cooking now! We cooking now! It's 12 o'clock somewhere. We cooking now! I got a Winston now. They're running triple tank. Monkey on point. Ah, oh, well, that's not good. God damn it. All right. We just got to make one more push. We gotta get in there, guys. Gotta get in there. 
I got it. Winston dead. Winston dead. Let's go. Winnable, winnable, winnable. Diva's almost out of mech. Heal's coming in. Oh man, they're all chasing me. I don't know where everybody was at. All right, this tiebreaker time. We need guys. a Zarya. If we get a Zarya, we win. Tiebreaker time, guys. Peter, go Zarya, bro. Come on. Yeah, I'm not losing these scrubs, bro. We can. This is 100% winnable. Oh, there. Come on, Zarya. One of you. Come on. For some of you guys that are wondering, uh, yes, guys, this is FedReacts. Welcome. I'm uh, doing one game stream just to let the audience kind of see. Zarya, what please. Come on. All right, we lost. No, nah, we didn't lose, bro. Don't worry. Our tanks just need to push in, bro. Their tanks are outplaying our tanks. That's the problem. Mercy, what Winston... Uh, Winston dove me. He's on the right-hand side. Resetting. <clears throat> the hell? Somebody behind us? Nice hook. Anti healed. He's one shot. That's one dead, one dead, one pick off. Kill this idiot, man. Let's go, I killed two, let's go! We out here! Let's go, get on the fucking point, man. We got this shit. Dudes are trash! One shot on Kariko. Oh, she teleported away. Take that shit, I got a high noon, man, let's go! All right. Back up, back up, back up. Fight from point, guys. Fight from point. Fight from point. Fight from point, man. There's no need to be sitting there in front of their spawn. Back up. They're ulting. Back up. Monkey on the right. Monkey and Kiriko. I need help. There's like two of them on me here. Bro, where is the team? God damn. Bruh. We shouldn't be losing to these kids. Exactly they suck. Hey, that's all right. Get this Doom, out. bro. Oh, Just Diva, play Diva, Zarya, Diva, Diva. brother. Come on. We gotta get on point, guys. We gotta get on point. Wow. All right. I don't know what our tanks were doing, but we lost that one. Terrible. Yeah. All right. So you guys just watch the game and me play here.
as y'all can see, Overwatch is a very team reliant game, and sometimes kids on your team are not that good. Like our tanks got outplayed, and we lost that one. But that's Open Queue. They ran triple tank. So with Open Queue guys, they can go ahead and run any characters they want. Um, and running a triple tank is very difficult to beat sometimes. Uh, but yeah, my team was trash. Um, but yeah, there you go. So guys, I'm gonna end the stream here. Uh, you guys definitely can, uh, you know, obviously I didn't warm up or anything else like that. That was just me just kind of getting into it. Um, I'll, I'll uh, start another stream up on Rumble, uh, where you guys will see me go crazy on there. But obviously we're on YouTube, so I got to keep it clean. But uh, but yeah, hope you guys enjoyed watching that one game. Uh, normally I play it with other people too, and I talk a lot more trash, but obviously we're on YouTube, so I'm keeping it clean. But yes, I'm pissed off right now that we lost that first game. I'm, I'm not happy at all. Let's see if there's anybody on. <laughs> you can see Angie's online. Uh, she's playing right next to me. She's into it. Uh, okay, let's see here. All right, cool. Guys, I'm going to come back on stream. If you guys want to watch it on uh, watch me stream this, go on Rumble, rumble.com slash fresh fit. I'll stream the rest of the games on there. But I'm not going to stream it here because uh, I got to significantly um, keep myself clean. And this is the Fed Reacts channel, and obviously this isn't a gaming channel. But I figured I'd do one game for you guys since you guys wanted me to do one for y'all. But I love y'all guys. Uh, Look on Rumble. It'll be up in about 10 minutes. All right. Peace, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the Diddy case. I'm going to put the timestamps in there for y'all as well. Love y'all.